Uh, are we live? Uh, are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein we just finished organizing scrap, being picked up from orbit and going back down to the surface. Uh, just because looking at the products that come out, we want most of these things uh, to be available on the surface. Uh, it'll be cheaper overall with the space elevator cost this way. Um, I can't remember if we set up our vanilla train to deliver this stuff yet. It looks like the answer is no. Did we have a vanilla train for the scrap? Oh, here it is. Um, have I not set it up properly? So we've got... It's waiting to go to Scrap Provider. Which currently has train limit zero, I think. Yes. Uh, so let me just fix the rest of the schedule here. I need to swap this thing out. We need... Oops. Scrap. Uh, requester? Did I not name the other one properly? I think, I think this is how I named the first one. And yeah, there it is. And I should probably do the same thing. I'll, I'll probably defunct that old one, but I want to stick with our naming convention down here. Uh, so let's find our train again. Scrap. There's still a station called Scrap Requester somewhere. Why could it be? Oh, right. No, that makes sense. It's up in orbit. That's for the... Um... Hmm. I should probably make this station name a bit more descriptive. Um, what I did with the vanilla to LTN was the LTN side just says Thing Provider, which is normal for our LTN naming convention. But when we do the requester, we say what it's for. So I think maybe for this station, um, I'll want to name it Scrap Requester going to Vanilla Train Stop Provider seems okay. Alright, so then... Scrap. Seems good. Alright, so... We're... We're in orbit. Yeah, we're in orbit. We go to the depot... We wait till train limit is greater than one for this thing. We pick up the scrap. We go downstairs. We go to the depot. And we drop off. Seems good, except it's bugging me how it's like a little bit offset from how we usually, how the schedules usually look with these things. Hagen up, dut dut, Hagen down. I think I want it to be like. Hagen down, and then Hagen up. So... That goes here. Yeah, there we go. Should already be working. Um, except I need to bring some scrap over here to test it. Uh, I can do that, rather than arbitrarily do that, um, I think yesterday we were working on contaminated scrap. Didn't quite have time to finish it, we went a bit over time yesterday. Uh, so let's do that now. I just need some Meowgamin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Meow indeed. Uh... I just need a pickup station down here, 
Actually, I need two pickup stations. There's two solids, two fluids. We can do this easily. If we do one solid, one fluid at each, we don't need any fancy circuitry or anything like that um, with LTN. Let's go with this. Looks like the rail is all connected. Evil Pla, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we want our huge storage tanks on this side, I think. Alternatively, I could do like big storage tank here and here. I would really like this layout if we want fast unloading or loading like on this side. Uh, if only the space underground pipes would reach across here. Unfortunately they don't. This is actually nine tiles. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like the one big container a bit better anyway. As, as long as the fluid is slow, which it is, it's 8 per second as opposed to 80 per second. Um, we really don't have to worry that much about how quickly the trains get loaded with fluid here. And we can do the same thing on this side. Um, I won't bother doubling it just yet because these things are incredibly fast, but I'll just leave room. Uh, like, I don't think I'll build anything different in this block other than uh, scrap processing. I could move all of this over a bit. It might make it a bit tidier. What if, um, for example... Oh, that does happen to line up. Well, that's something. We can actually connect contaminated... Cosmic, uh, sorry, contaminated bio sludge like this. Out of Nix and Bilbo, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. I am Sark as well. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Um, is there a convenient spot to, like, oh, I forgot this bit. Is there a convenient spot to get contaminated cosmic water across? Not really. That's unfortunate. I'll just have to bring it down here, I guess. Hi, did you configure bulk rail loader to serve all items? Uh, yes, I did. Yes. Uh, default, it only works with, like, ores and stuff for some reason. Um, but I did, in fact, uh, update it. Or, not update it, but just reconfigure it. Sort of work with everything. Alright, so that's contaminated cosmic water. This is contaminated bio sludge. Um, obviously we're not going to find a convenient fit over here if I move this over. Um, we also need... I think, um... I think I would like to mirror this, even if I'm not going to build it yet, just to measure it. And why doesn't this one line up the same way with this uh, underground pipe here? Oh, because I messed up where this station goes, that's why. That would probably explain it. Actually, does it though? Yeah, 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 all of this is supposed to be over a couple of tiles. So, one, two. And... I 
sink here. Yep. I know you used it before just for ores, indeed. I'm gonna need to tell LTN what we've got. Um, that kind of changes my calculation for where would be the neatest spot to line this up. Um, I could probably... Could probably do something with some long pipes over here. And this one appears to be correct. We're gonna want a drop off for contaminated cosmic scrap up here. I guess I just won't worry about it yet. Less inserters? Yes, exactly. Because the uh, the unloaders and loaders, uh, especially, that I had last playthrough, um, I, I, I proved that I could do just about anything with them, um, and they did the job, but the UPS cost adds up a lot when you've got so many stations. Alright. I think we'll only do long trains for this one. And this will be... well, let's fill it out first. We're only outputting... yeah, scrap here and uranium here. So this is going to be scrap. And probably contaminated cosmic water. It looks like that'll line up more easily. Let's find out. Let me just measure this real quick. So if I put this like here, that's actually dead center in the middle. We should be able to put a white area beacon on each side. Yeah, very easily, without covering this side as well for beacon sickness. Not that I think we'll ever use beacons with this build. But I do like to set things up uh, to be nice and extensible. And we can actually, actually have some symmetry here. I'm much happier with that. We also need cosmic water, um, so we'll add that to the drop-off. Ooh! Ooh, I wish I could say this was calculated, but I actually left exactly the right space to, uh, to have the most efficient drop-off for our cosmic water. Calculated. Meant to do that, it's fine, don't worry about it. And I could potentially have our contaminated cosmic water come through this way. That's a seven, I believe. No, that's a five. Uh, Poltech, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Neat, indeed. Do you need to know how to use circuits to use LTN? Uh, not really. Also, when you would, uh, when would you say is a good point to swap to a city block LTN base layout just to get to military science on my playthrough? That's actually a really tough question, that last one. Um, like, depending on when you try and switch over from, like, a main bus or whatever to doing everything in rail blocks, you're either going to be struggling for, you know, getting the materials to build your rail out and everything else, um, or you're going to, like, go further and... Excuse me. Uh, or you're going to, like, go further and there's going to be so much less, uh, so much more mess to clean up that you're left with, like, so much more stuff that you're trying to get away from using, but you keep using it. 
it's actually kind of tough. Kandar Jr., good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I said hello, I am suck. Um, but yeah, LTN, okay, does, if I, if I had like 30 seconds to, to give my pro tips for LTN, uh, there's a lot more I could say about it, but here's what you really need to know. Number one, most important, go to the mod settings. Um, your mileage may vary on what the best possible settings are, but if you make certain assumptions, which I think are very reasonable assumptions, and don't look at or change the mod settings, it will set traps for you, and things will go wrong that you will not understand, and they're sort of not really your fault unless, you know, you're going to take that attitude of RTFM. Um, like, trains are going to give up after 120 seconds and go back to the depot full of items. Uh, trains are going to be considered dead, like lost forever after 10 minutes, and then the LTN will send another train and another train if there's a deadlock. Uh, trains will keep loading, like they'll wait for more stuff just because two seconds inactivity, even if they're only supposed to be delivering 1,000 items, which is the default provide and request threshold. Uh, there's a lot of little traps like that. Um, so I have my own opinions on how, what's a good way to set these things, but the number one thing is look at the, look at the mod settings for LTN. Uh, and other than that, what you really need to know is it's a little counterintuitive at first that when you are requesting something, you put in a negative number. So contaminated scrap, we're going to say uh, 50 times 100 times 2 for two train loads, that is 10,000. So negative 10,000. But Instead of thinking that's weird for a request, it's a negative number, look at it. Start, start by looking at a provider station. So for a provider station, all you have to do is connect a wire to the logistic train stop input that tells it what we've got. So you get a positive signal for items that we do have here and or fluids or whatever. Uh, pretend we're just doing one type of item. Uh, if you... If you're giving it a positive signal, basically you're telling it that these items are available. And if the... If it meets the provide threshold, uh, it will send a train to pick it up. If there's a requester asking for it. So... Here we have a positive signal. And LTN's gonna take some stuff from it, and it's going to go from positive to zero, or positive to a smaller positive number. So it's pushing it towards zero. With a requester, when this is empty, um, let me just get rid of it for a sec. With a requester station, we've got no signal here when it's empty, and we're giving it negative 10,000. LTN is also going to try to push this signal value um, that's on the, uh, the green light here that the logistic train stop input is receiving, it's going to try to get that number towards zero as well. So we give it a negative number. Uh, when the train comes, it fills up with contaminated scrap. Negative 10,000 plus whatever's in here is eventually close to zero. And when it's about zero or, you know, when the request threshold isn't high enough, when it's close enough to zero, LTN won't schedule a train. LTN tries to balance. Yes, exactly. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Fraser K, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. At the moment, having been woken up by 20 messages. Yikes. Sorry to hear that. Got it. Thanks for the tips. You're welcome. Yeah, I dare say um, everything I know about LTN, you could 
probably, I would think, deduce from everything I just told you. Like, you can... Uh, you can work it all out from there. Like, that's that's the basics that you absolutely need. I think. Probably. That should hopefully be enough to avoid or at least understand uh, the common pitfalls. Alright. Um, I think... We need to balance this stuff, but it's fast. It's 80 per second before uh, before we add some modules and stuff. I'm not going to go faster than that until we have faster belts, because I'm not going to reshape it. Um, but technically, I could... The thing is, I want to be able to have more than one train load. Uh, accumulating in here because it's so fast and and I want to keep it balanced and I want I don't think the built-in inserters um, in the bulk rail loaders can pick up 40 items per second on each side probably I'm not sure actually we could test it I guess We've actually got the, um, uh, we've actually got, or are about to get the highest tier of inserter stack size bonus. Boovim, thank you very much for the resub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And thank you so much for the three months. Okay, if we... what? Oh, I switched it off. Duh. Okay, can the built-in inserters keep up with this? Actually, yes. And that's 45 per second on each side. Okay, let's just do it like that then. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Because it won't be perfectly balanced. Uh, that's the same problem as if I put the belt straight in here. Because these things don't happen to balance all the time. They're close, but close isn't good enough, especially on a long timeline. Uh, well, we're not going to be able to be perfectly symmetrical here, and that's a tragedy, but what are you going to do? That'll do, I think. Oh, it's actually regular scrap. Did I name this right? It looks like that's regular scrap, right? Yeah. Um, all right. Loader and loader. I use a variant of Mazuri. I was using a lot of that last playthrough. It adds up too quickly, especially when you've got like 24 or 48 inserters at each train stop. Are you using on the space rail blocks the space cargo wagons? I will be, yes. That's why I changed the provide stack threshold here from 80 to 100 just now. With the mini loader mod, because you can configure those. Oh, as opposed to the Crastorio 2 loaders? Why is the uh, pump animating like that? That's weird. I guess it's pumping into itself. Okay, uh, and we'll want to do the same... Oh, I forgot to filter the outputs. Um... Hmm... Hmm... Where's the most elegant spot to squeeze that in? What the? Oh, my inventory's full. It's 
So when and if we double this, that's going to be here. Um, I want... Come to think of it, I need to fit these belts. I might want a f four to four balancer. Oh, here we go. I should just hijack this uh, splitter that we've already got. Uranium goes this way. And then I think we'll need some more underground pipe here. And uranium should be slow enough that we don't really need to... Yeah, even if even if we multiplied this by literally a hundred, uh, it would be beyond way more than slow enough that we don't really need to bother with a splitter there. Um, so uranium, like this. Where is this going? Like that. Wait, that's not right. That needs to be different this time. Um... Uranium's going to be so slow, we can just do it this way. And we could just not bother picking it up until there's like a couple of train loads worth. Um, and limit the front. Okay, so as for... that's unfortunate. I guess I could push this forward a tile. Can I fit, like, a... Uh... Oh, I know. Wait, no I don't. No, I don't. I could push four into the back and two into the front. But then I'd need some kind of balancer logic. But if I try to do it with just belts, um, splitters do cost something with UPS. And it's going to be really big and unsightly. And it's also not going to balance properly. I'm thinking we do four to the back and push two belts to the front. Hughes Mike, thank you very much for the ten gifted subs. Much appreciated. Thank you. And welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Hope you like it, uh, own galaxy. Find a breathe. Saren. I am the sky. Uh, Nia, Nia traps. Atlas, Miloxel, Avi Puck, Ragamuffin, and I don't know how to read those characters. Uh, thank you so much, Hughes Mike. Much appreciated. Yay, indeed. Alright, so we're not going to have the front... I should probably limit the front to like 40 stacks, because this will push through so quickly. You're welcome. Not sure what's funny about that, but thank you. Um, this actually looks like it's going to fit perfectly. Oh, wow. Calculated. Beautiful fit.
kind of makes me want to build the whole thing properly to be well not properly like like build the whole double thing to begin with why not it's only like 24 machines and we know this will be way more contaminated scrap uh I, will it though actually I don't know how long this will be more than enough I guess we'll find out how many tiles is this or not tiles but rail box four and then this goes here perfect very nice And then copy settings. Did I name the station? I did not. Uh, and we need a 60k fluid request, 100k for um, request stack threshold. 10k contaminated scrap is 50 times 100 times 2. Two train loads. Seems good. That's all connected. All right, contaminated scrap requester goes into decontamination facility, makes scrap and contaminated cosmic water and contaminated bio sludge. Very descriptive name. Rolls off the tongue. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but you glance at it and you can see exactly what it does. Okay. That needs a belt. Let's check all of this works. With some test input. And we also need cosmic water. I almost forgot to request that. Let's just go for 100k. I guess I could connect these two, but space pipes are so... Well, I guess uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nah, it's fine. I think we'll just leave that as is. And what's our provide threshold? 100. Seems good. Actually make this a bit more. I guess it doesn't matter. Alright, Roberto Tamagnoli. Uh, this one's going to be uranium. And contaminated bio sludge provider. Seems good. Oh wait, I forgot to make them high priority. Because we always have to get rid of these Laze Laze Dong. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Does Crestorio and Space Exploration go well with each other? I'd say it does, yeah. They do. 55, no mouse. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll have to rename these stations again. Um scrap. And Contaminated cosmic water, active provider, bump up the provide thresholds, high priority, seems good. This should be about the same, except just to simplify 
I'll increase the amount of uranium that's needed before we bother to pick that up. And... That's looking pretty good. Uranium and... Contaminated biosludge. Active provider. I wonder if there's anything in space that specifically uses uranium ore. I doubt it. Let's see. I mean, we can we can do processing in space. It just doesn't have the um, productivity bonuses. And also, I would want to get the iron and the uranium two thirty eight. And the 235 downstairs for that matter. So I think we should just send it downstairs. It's going to be very... Oh, hello. There is something. Oh no, this is to turn it into particle stream. That doesn't really count. There's a recipe like that for everything. And we can turn it into matter. There's so little of it that we're going to get this way. Instead of setting up a logistic chain to take it back downstairs, uh, I think I would rather turn it into matter eventually. Hopefully we don't actually fill all this up by the time we get there. They have an extensive integration? They do indeed. Alright, so I think this is our build. Um... Now I just want to remove the cheat stuff for testing. I forgot to put the cosmic water over here to test it. Whoops. Let's do that real quick. Make sure all of that is connected properly. And this is one of the reasons we test things, because I would have actually missed that. I also need to get contaminated cosmic water into this container, but it's going to be super slow for the fluids no matter how much we speed this up. So we can do anything we like with the shape of the pipes here. Let's do just a oh, one-off. I was going to say a 15 down here and then we'll do an underground. Um, I guess it's going to be like a 9. That'll be... I think that's six tiles. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the obvious path. It's going to be the neatest way to do it. At least that fits. Alright, so there's our contaminated cosmic water. I mean, contaminated bio sludge. And we've got our inputs, and the machines are working, question mark? No, nope, I missed a little bit. Um, wait, I missed more than a little, wait, are we full already? Wow, okay, um, we need to output... We need, we need to delete this stuff for the sake of testing. Let's get a superior long inserter and shove it in here and delete. It's actually way too slow. Um, I can't really fit... Alright, fine. We're going to remove this, we're going to add a deep space loader. Do they only come in black? We've got all these different colors for deep space belts, but as far as I can see, the deep space loaders only come in black. Huh. Well then. How fast is this? 90 per second, I think? 
That's actually not fast enough. Alright. I think... Let's see. 90 per second, 180 per second. Yeah, that's as fast as the belts can go. So that should not bottleneck anything for the testing. I guess I could have just put temporarily, like, void belts here. Bonk? What are we bonking? Other side's getting rid of the contaminated? Um... Oh, this side? For contaminated biosludge? Yeah, I was meaning to do that as well. Let's, uh, let's do a little square. It looks nice. So those should all be connected. Oh. I wonder how we fa- oh, I think I just accidentally deleted it. I was going to say how we failed to copy that. Seems good. Um, let's just check. We've got 1.7k here. If we click all over the place, we should see the same value for fluid system contents. Looks good. And we'll check for... We need to connect these as well. Uh, this is... six tiles. That'll do. So everywhere we click 1.3k for the contaminated cosmic water. Seems good. Oh, also we've got a uh, pipe visualizer. Makes it a little bit easier, but I guess not necessarily that easy. Oh, hello. That's a crime against symmetry. Or it was. This is a really great mod, I need to use it more. Uh, but yeah, I think that is our build. We've still got only four uranium out of all of this. So it's kind of hard to see if that part is working, but I believe it is. Okay, let's get rid of the testing stuff, put these pumps back in, delete, apparently I already deleted the cheat inputs, and then we're going to go into tiles, uh, empty space, brush nice and big, and we're just going to brush all over this, and it's going to get rid of every bit of scaffolding that we don't strictly need. Uh, and I might add a bit of scaffolding back, just so it doesn't look really weird and tacky. Let me just make it bigger. Whoa, that's, that's way too big. 25, 26, 27. And that yeah, doesn't look too bad, I guess. Uh, 19 for this spot. Down here looks kind of kind of bad. Let's do this. I don't love how this is sticking out by itself, but I guess it's fine. 
You can just put some uranium inside factories, that's true. Uranium ore. And we just shove it in here. Oh, except now it's got nowhere to go. It's taking a surprisingly long time to clear out there. Considering the belts are moving at full speed. Oh, I guess all of these machines have a bunch backed up. Yeah. It's getting faster. I'm really, really happy with this little... This little neat compact layout. With the, uh... The don't go this way filter to put these splitters together. Uh, but yeah, it looks like our uh, uranium finds its way where it's supposed to go. No trouble. Alright. A little bit more scaffolding for the look of it. I think I do want to scaffold this. Yeah, I'm a little happier with that. Uh, this definitely looks weird. That's fine. And then... I think it's time to blueprint. Okay. So this is... Scrap... Contaminated scrap, decontamination. Snap to grid, tiles, train stop names. I'm pretty sure I did the train stop names. I hope so. And looks like our snap to grid is correct. We can rotate. Let's put this down here. Oh, I guess I'll, if I'm going to be consistent with that naming convention. How's that? Alright. Now we decide where to put it. Uh, I've actually only got half an hour left on my life support. Also, we did a bunch of zone discovery. I don't know... I don't know what planet I discovered recently. Bruh. There's too many... I can't scroll up the, the console. Oh no. Or oh, maybe it just didn't appear in the console because we were in the editor space. I don't know which planets I've looked at. Why are they different colors? Scaffolding? Indeed. Lower train... Lower right train track? What do you mean? Lower right train track. Something weird here. Oh, I think it's an item on the ground? What? What is that? like nothing. Oh, it's the train stop. It's a graphic from the train stop. You scrolled over it? What did I scroll over? Hold up. That Patreon thing means it's like the first thing we saw since we loaded the game. Did I finish the... I don't think I finished that research while I was... Like, before I saved. Very hard to see. Um... What?
right side of the right down train station. What am I looking for? Just put scaffolding on the track? But the, the, oh, oh, if we're being consistent, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's literally impossible to see. Okay. Um, I'm not going to redo the blueprint. That takes too many clicks and stuff. We'll just do it over here. All right, get out of here. Train stop names. You give me too much clutter. Where do we want to process contaminated scrap? Probably close to one of the main places where we're going to pick up contaminated scrap. Um, so maybe up here? Oh, how about right, right below, right next to this one that outputs contaminated scrap? It's also closer to the middle. I like that better. Alright, let's bring our construction train, which is over here still. Let's find out how much stuff it's still got in it. It did make a slight small visual change. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Oh, I see. I'll be very surprised if we have enough scaffold. Yeah, no. Because we did a different build already. Alright. Let's just let the bots place what they can, and then we'll go back. Just wait for inactivity. Ten seconds. And what can I do while we wait on that? How's our copper doing? It crashed earlier, and we added a few more mines. And fixed an existing one. It is a bit slow, it looks like. Oh, wait. Oh, we're limiting this one to only one train load. So it's always going to look kind of slow. Uh, what about our copper ingots over here? Not looking so great. We're out of pyroflux. Uh, we've got plenty of enriched copper here. That's kind of spooky. That's kind of really spooky. I should really prod module these things. Alright, I'm not going to ride the train. We're going to go downstairs. Actually, before I go, I don't need to be carrying this much stuff. I'll let the train take some of it back. It'll get sorted out. Okay. So first things first, everything that consumes pyroflux, I want prod module 3s in it. Also, are we having trouble with uh, vulcanite specifically? Uh-oh. Yeah, vulcanite core fragments aren't moving. We've actually got a lot of We've got a trainload of vulcanite blocks available for pickup on both sides here. So I don't know how we don't have five row blocks. Uh, I think we've got about a million trains not moving for some reason. But they all seem to be in the depot. I don't see a traffic jam. Provide stack threshold 160. Oh, that's two train loads. That's why. 
because we're sending all this up to orbit um, until orbit is saturated. That might be the entire reason. Um, vulcanite block is saturated at least, and there's a lot here. But why is Vulcanite Core Fragment not moving? That's what I'd like to know. It's actually full on this end. There's not enough liquid rocket fuel. Are we making the liquid rocket fuel? There's no light oil. Well, there's your problem. What is the actual problem here? No crude? Uh, okay. That is... Not the problem I was expecting. Are we actually empty? Wow. Okay. Um. No? I mean, yes, but no. There's apparently only 60k crude oil left here, but this is full. So what's happened with our fluid wagons? I don't see any in the depots. There must be a fluid wagon stuck somewhere. Here it is. There's the problem. I'm not sure how this happened. Um, I am sure how this happened, actually. It's bad signaling. Oh my goodness. Okay, can I get this guy to park here for a sec? And then... We need some signals over here. And I'll, I think I'll have to manually get these guys to move uh, before the construction train can find its way over here. One pair of signals missing. Entire... Uh, entire factory crawls to a halt eventually. All right, I'm going to have to get you to do the same. I'm surprised it took that long for the problem to show itself. I guess we do have 400k uh, crude oil stored at each oil, potentially. We're asking for about 300k on each side. Or uh, at each block. Still, it is surprising to already see a whole oil patch just emptied. Luckily, there is quite a bit of oil on this planet. We'll be able to keep this up for a while. I could always do coal liquefaction. There's there's a lot of coal. If oil becomes a problem that way. Oops. Not steel mage. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just send the waiting trains back. Um, well, they're all on a one-way piece of rail. If I was driving them manually, I could easily bring them back this way, get them on the roundabout. But to drive them automatically, um, I need them to obey the traffic rules. And then that should be all it takes. If this was a chain signal, I guess there wouldn't have been a problem, actually. Yep. And that's it. It's already fixed. Here comes light oil. And there's probably already... Yep, liquid rocket fuel getting made. And we're quite close to a pickup for that. Well, uh, that said, I do think I want to 
prod bonus everything that uses pyroflux. Let's go get our modules. Probably just take as many as I can carry. Oh. Oh, right. This needs Vulcanite blocks. Alright, we're going to steal some. One of the benefits of having these high provide thresholds is there's always some available to take manually if we need it. Like quite a lot, actually. Alright, Vulcanite blocks. Go in here. I forgot it takes half a. I mean, a whole quarter of a stack. Just to make one tier 3 module. We're actually bottlenecked on the inserters. It's kind of wild. Alright. Um, we're not going to get that many modules just sitting around. Let's see if 178 is enough for what I have in mind. Probably not. Um, but I guess for now we probably want to focus on copper. Let's do a module inserter furnace rod 3 and go. And go. We're already out. But I'll go ahead and mark these ones as well. Everything that makes ingots. We want to prod bonus that. We can't prod, prod bonus the, uh, the actual casting machines though. Looks like I did already prod bonus these ones. Fantastic. Uh, so how many are we short? I wonder. Can I see it with blueprint? Uh, no I can't. Module inserter. 120 for each block. Adds up to... 542. And what's our rate of production? Oh, not that bad. We've done 34 since I left. Um, production 3. In the last minute, we've been doing 20 per minute. So about 5, 25... 25 to 30 minutes we'll be able to fill all of those with prod modules. Is the same? No, not painful at all, just different? Wait, what? Does the logistic train, construction train, have some you can steal? That's a good idea. It should have 300. Um, probably more, because there'd be some in the... Uh, the buffer chest as well. We might even have enough to just finish this thing immediately. That's 200, and that is another 200. Uh, and that is... That's 550, 62. Yeah, I think we've got enough. Really good coal. Is coal liquefaction same as vanilla in K2? Sounds painful to run out of oil. Uh, I think it is. Let me just check the recipe. I don't think I can look at it here, though. Oh, oh, yeah, I can. Uh, we can do coke as well. 10 coke, 25 light, 50 steam makes 20 heavy, 90 light, and 20 petroleum. 
Um, but cold liquefaction. 25 heavy becomes 85 heavy. 10 cold is gone. We get uh, we have to put in steam as well. That means water. Well, actually, I mean everything oil needs water, so that's not really different. Um, it might be a little different, but it's basically the same. Oh, what's happening to my bots? Oh no, there was a crash. Um, shift C. There we go. Thank you very much, even distribution. Don't need any prods here. Let's start from the bottom right. Fantastic. I'll go left to right on this this one. I think we've already added all the prods we can over here. Already prodded these ones. Yep, those are prod threes. Are these prod threes? Yes. We really went from starving for production uh, productivity threes to being absolutely swamped in them. It's a good feeling. Post scarcity for a certain thing. I'm positive we already prod three the cables. Fantastic. Do we have a? That's what I want to see. Vulcanite. Beautiful. I'm kind of glad that we had to f do uh, find something to do with our downtime for a few seconds there, uh, up in orbit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have spotted that for a while. All right, let's park here for inactivity 60 seconds. No research. Um... I don't have that much left to research with the spaghetti. I guess we could do substation mark two. I don't see why we would when we've got uh, when we've got substation pylons. I could knock off. I could not knock off quantum processor. We could do personal laser defense mark three. Let's do it. Um, portable RTG Mark II is 1.2 megawatts. Uh, I've said this before, but the nuclear one is so much better. This isn't worth talking about. Uh, it is part of a prereq to get to worker robot speed 8, though. Which is very expensive. But we like worker robot speed, don't we? Bungie bomb. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do you think it will benefit the Vulcanite planet with another oil field tapped? Probably, yeah. I can do that remotely. We haven't run out yet. We've got a few pickups for oil. Um, I need Bioscience 1 to get some personal upgrades. And we've got, of course, Zone Discovery that we can spam for a while. Follow a robot count. Let's knock that off. It's ex it, it's expensive, but like I'm not doing anything with my research at the moment. And we can really go ham with the robots um, after that. Spaghetti research sounds Italian. How dare you. Um, that looks... Pardon me, that looks pretty good. What's the next? 
Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell the construction train to finish the job. I hope we've got enough scaffolding. How much scaffolding is this? Like 2.3k to go. I think it's going to take another trip. Because I'm only asking it to carry 2.2k. Maybe I should have a separate train just for scaffolding. Scaffolding, rails, signals, uh, lighted pylon substations, solar panels. And then the other construction train can carry things like, uh, you know, combinators, assembly machines, train stops, bulk loaders, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's definitely going to take one more trip. I wonder if I could... If two greater than one... If I can send that to train... Let's suppose I can connect this here. I don't suppose there's anywhere for me to piggyback this across? It kind of is. It's a little sketchy, but I could, without adding anything, get a wire across here so that I could make the train recognize when it's fully loaded. Um, I could just set the circuit condition to two greater than one so I don't even have to add another combinator. Two greater than one. And then this green wire is going to find its way across here. Uh, that's going to send it in circles. But the idea was I was going to add a temp stop before it got back there. And I could, like, change this... Like, I could just blank that circuit condition when I don't want it to immediately come back. El Pancho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If you set that up, would it not just loop the train? Yes, it would. So I'm just going to, like, right-click this when I don't want it to loop. The only trouble is, if I add a temp stop here, like, right now... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be set to go to the temp stop immediately. So I'll just wait until it's loaded, which is almost done. Fantastic. Uh, it doesn't seem to be going, actually. I guess a pulse, which is which is what this is, like, this condition can only be met for one tick, I think. Um, I guess a pulse isn't enough, necessarily, to send the train anywhere? So the way we do this is... Remind yourself that overconfidence is when we get our signal... This thing outputs one, it goes to the next one as well. When we get a signal, this thing outputs two, one tick later. So we output one, and then we output two. Um, and for one tick, we're outputting one, but not two. And then... Two greater than one. That's like backward from what I would have thought it would be. Output 1, and then output 2. You would think this would make a sound when we stop giving this a signal? But... How did it... Wait, what? How did disconnecting that and reconnecting it not cause a sound to happen? Th 
That's really weird. Oh, because we're no longer sending an S signal because everything's loaded. So when we stop receiving an S signal, that stops sending a signal. And then for one tick, two will be greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. It's a bit different from a usual, like, pulse generator. I've just worked out how to load a cargo train with a variety of items, but I noticed that you can't get per wagon information, yeah, from the station when the train has arrived. Any way to tell a specific loader what is already in a specific wagon? Not really. And that's exactly why um, there are no items that I put, other than construction robots, there are no items that I put in two different cargo wagons for the same type. And with the filter inserters I've got here that unload things that aren't supposed to be in the train, um, they're just set to stack size 1, and they receive information based on the entire train. So if we've got, like, a stack of different items that aren't supposed to be in the train, or, like, extra items uh, in each cargo wagon... Uh, yeah. If this only had one filter anyway, um, this would be set to... Like, it would only empty one of the cargo wagons at a time of the excess stuff. Anyway, let's send our train back here yet again. Wait for inactivity 60. And as soon as the uh, scaffolding is placed, We'll place the blueprint properly. I should probably add some more signals here because this train is waiting for this train through this entire shortcut. Oh hey! We are spamming machine learning data. And we've already got... Uh... A train load and a quarter. Nice. Hello, hello. Dilka, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That works well enough for my purposes. Thanks, you're welcome. Yeah, that'll, um, that'll work for, like... Well, except for the fact that we have to put construction bots in each wagon. Um, if we, if we didn't have to do that. Like, that would work to get precisely what's supposed to be in the train without going to these unloaders first. Um, however, depending on how different the contents of the train is when it comes back, uh, it could take a while to correct it. Okay. There's our build. Let's... Place this, left click, no shift, works perfectly. Mouse wheel. Why lock place for items in carriage? Or why not? I mean, you can do that, but I, I don't like to have to change this all the time. Uh, when I change my mind about what's going in there. Also, if you use LTN, uh, it removes those all the time. But with these sorts of trains, I'm not using LTN regardless. We're going to need some more space undergrounds and probably belts in general. It's actually just threes and undergrounds that we've run out of here. And the belts. And surprisingly, the splitters almost. All right, that seems to be about it. Let's go back. I'm just going to change this to inactivity and then come back here again. And wait for inactivity. I wonder if I could put in a system where I count how many times the train has done the loop so that I could queue all of this up and come back later, and if I've forgotten about it, it hasn't been going round and round in circles.
Too inflexible? Yeah. Hulk smashed my... Oh no. Uh, hello. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Signals are more convenient when they are on the inside of the tracks. This is true. Okay. If, uh, if signals... If right-hand drive is wrong, I don't want to be right. Wait, no, I said that backward. If left-hand drive is wrong, I don't want to be right. Perfect. Only took one try, or two tries. Alright, are we okay-ish with our Vulcanite? More importantly, our liquid rocket be well. It is getting produced. Make a station that has no path and set it to the train schedule. That way it will not loop. I don't really want to have to make like arbitrary extra stations. I know they work, I've done them before. It's just kind of weird. Alright, uh, what are we building next? The reason that we were building stuff to deal with scrap uh, was because we don't want to have our stuff stop when we're making blank data cards and stuff. We've still got a ton of blank data cards. That looks good. Um, we need to find a use for this... Uh... Oh, hey. Oh, hey. That's a lot of space science packs. Nice. I think next I'd like to do... Uh... Oh, I need to send the train back. Wait, what? How did... Uh, how did... How... What the... It didn't come back with... Uh... I think we can go straight to the loader. It, it didn't come back with the space underground, uh, the space pipes and stuff. What if you set the train limit on the unloader to zero when there is a train detected at the loading station? That might be genius. Because that's the one time we never want it to automatically leave the station. And it's actually, like, an incredibly simple, elegant, succinct uh, way to define that logic. So I just detect train at the train stop for the loader. And set train limit to 1 or 0 at the unloader, based on that, with one combinator. Alright, decide a combinator. Goes here somewhere. We'll piggyback across the uh, active provider chests here. It's not going to matter if we're reading their contents. Read train contents. Uh, read stopped train as T. I don't think that's going to affect any of these circuits. Yeah, I really don't think it's going to throw any other circuits off. Um, if T is equal to zero, output... 1L for train limit. And set train limit L. So then we can just set it to loop um, all the time. Wait, what? Hold on. Inactivity 5 seconds. Now this station should be Train limit zero. Fantastic. I 
I think with no condition it just blew through the station and didn't technically stop here. And that's why it didn't detect that it shouldn't come back here. For some reason we've got extra rail in here. Also extra construction bots. That's it. We're loaded properly. Why... What... Why does it leave the station? We can see the train limit is zero while it's here, but somehow it still leaves the station and then this goes to train limit not zero. Uh, I could make it inactive instead. This is one of the use... you got to be careful with enable-disable. But I think... Uh, if T equals... Yeah, if T equals zero... Enable station. So this is... This station is completely disabled right now. And it's... The train's not trying to leave the station because it doesn't have a station to go to. So I think what happens if we're using train limit is five seconds of inactivity passes, train leaves station, looking for... If, if there's any station called this that is active, even if it has train limit zero, it will leave the station, and then one tick later it's going to say... or two ticks later, because there was a combinator, it's going to say, oh, that train station does have a limit greater than zero, I'll go there. But because it's disabled, it'll it's basically trying to skip this stop. departs even though it doesn't move exactly. That's kind of neat. I'm kind of surprised we found a use case where you specifically want to use enable disable even though we've got train limits these days. And it's not because we're trying to skip this station. Although if we add a temp stop um, we actually are. So let's add temp stop and now it just goes there. If I don't move the temp stop around, it's not going to go to the emptier when it comes back. But uh, that's no big deal. We're going to go inactivity, 15 seconds. And yeah, now we've got a much, much easier and more natural, less actions per time that we do this way to loop the train back. And we can schedule it to come back after it loads again um, without having to, like I said before, without having to like worry that it's going to loop if we forget about it. That's brilliant. Really good call, like good try with setting the train limit based on this one. And then that led us to exactly the solution that we needed. Let's do it downstairs as well. Um, so we're going to just piggyback across these chests. We're going to say read stop to train. And we're going to say enable disable train equals zero. So that's how that's going to work. And whenever the train is parked there, oh, we can turn this into inactivity. Whenever the train is parked there, this stop is disabled. Absolutely beautiful. And right now, I can... Well, it's sort of a little late right now. I guess I could put it on manual. Give it a temp stop here, and then put it on go to construction train loader. And then it's going to do a needless loop, isn't it? Oh well. Wait for inactivity. 15 seconds. Did we actually finish the build, actually? E almost. Very almost. It's a bit of a waste to send the train for this. Uh, so I won't. Especially since I'm carrying the few efficiency modules that we need to finish it. I do need to take some space... 
underground pipe though to get it done. Instead of five seconds, you could wait for s equals zero. That might be a really good idea. Um, I would need to send this red wire to the train stop, and we've already got a red wire going up here. It would be a problem. I'd have to, like... Add another combinator just to separate the signals, or I'd have to go back and change all of these wire colors. Um, but if this wire went to here as well, there might be some crosstalk problems. This is just use case number 57,000, where I would love to have at least one more color wire. But, I mean, we could always just set it to, like, one second of inactivity as well. What? Oh, my robots are not... There we go. Did I really just run out of efficiencies? Did I leave any back here? I did not. Let's go grab some. Just put it on the green wire? Yeah, I, I would have to swap a lot of wire colors, um if I want to avoid adding a combinator and I want to avoid crosstalk that might cause a problem. All right, where's our modules? Give me some efficiencies. That's not as many prods as I hoped to see. I guess it's gonna take a while for Vulcanite to catch up again because of the liquid rocket fuel bottleneck. Definitely probably want to get Vulcanite for the first interstellar um, outpost. Since we're using cargo rockets um, at the moment, there's really nothing extra complicated about doing another Vulcanite outpost that is interstellar. Uh, the only change is the rockets are going to crash more often and cost a lot more liquid rocket fuel. And uh, I wonder if the spread from the crashed rockets gets even worse. But I could do it. I kind of want to, like, get all the way to spaceships so I just don't have to. Um, but yeah, that is our, decon our scrap decontamination build done. Let's do... Decont oh, recycle. Scrap. Decontamination. Dark Cider, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. My rocket crash is non-stop as it is, indeed. If you want to add another Possibly smart bit to your construction trains, make a unique stop, blueprint the stop, and add it to train. Wherever you place it, a train goes there in a cycle. When done, just delete it. Yeah, I don't want to do it that way. I want to use temp stops. Uh, I can do that, uh, the temp stops remotely as well. They're basically doing the job of our of spider drones on our outposts. Lion, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's... Uh, let's figure out what we're doing next. I think I'd like to do the next two science builds. Do we have the prereqs for them? Press X to doubt. We've got prod ones, iron ingot, uranium, vulcanite block, machine learning data... We don't have Plasma Stream. I think that's the only prerequisite in the rail block, uh, the rail network, that's missing for Prod Science Pack. And as for Utility Science Pack, I think we're actually ready. 
let's build it here. And I guess I'm going to jump into the editor first. I really need to make some life support canisters. Wait, what? Canister. Oh, and I wanted to do um, space train battery packs today as well. Although I'm not looking forward to replacing maybe a hundred trains. But the sooner the better, right? Life support. I actually had a little think about it and... Um, let's look at one of our newer depots. So I did a sushi belt system that's going to be suitable for the life support, uh, not life support, um, uh, the battery packs. And since these charging stations are just two by two, I could simply dot them around the sushi belt and pick up from the belt and output onto the same belt on the correct side. Since it's Crastorio, we can control which side of the belt the inserters put things onto. And instead of picking up space train power packs and putting them in here, the discharged ones, um, we could instead pick up the few that get destroyed to go somewhere else to be refurbished. So each of our depots could have um, the battery pack charging stations. I'm pretty sure... Well, I'm not sure. I hope... I hope we can fit enough charging stations around these sushi belts that we could just do it in the depots. And that'll keep up with the amount of power that the trains consume when they move. Um, having seen just how quickly those battery packs uh, get consumed, even though we doubled it with the mod settings, um, which is the best we could do, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we're going to need a ludicrous amount of these things, but like... We could easily fit, like, at least, what, 14 times 4-ish in each block, so it's probably fine. So yeah, we'll probably change this to, instead of discharged space train power pack, it's going to be the destroyed ones, the, f the, the 1% that, instead of getting recharged, get destroyed. And we'll have a train pick those up and go and fix them somewhere else. Um, but yeah, let's... Uh, before I forget, let's see if we have any life support canisters. We've got... 25. That's... I kind of expected zero or more than 25. This defies my expectations. But that is a few hours. It's actually like three and a half hours. It's not quite the rest of the stream of life support. Um, but for now, I'll just park myself inside spaceship so we don't drain life support. And into the editor. Let's clear this stuff away. Actually, we'll keep the scaffolding for now. And this as well. We're going to go tiles, space, uh, space platform scaffold, and just fill it all out. We'll remove the excess when we're done. Alright, so utility science pack. I believe we've got everything we need to make this happen. Uh, can it be made in anything but a space manufacturing? 
it cannot. And every single item here gets delivered by rail, and every single item here is going to output by rail. I think this is going to be a very small build, as opposed to uh, regular science, where I decided to build the space belts here as well. So I might do both uh, utility and production science packs in the same block. We only need one space manufactory for each. I want to swap those around. One, two, three, four, five solids, one fluid. One, two, three, four, five, and one. Same thing. This one also outputs thermo fluid, but they both output junk data cards. We could probably do it in half a block, to be honest. But I don't really see any need for that. Okay. Could we even just direct insert? Will inserters even keep up with that? Sounds like a direct insert party? Yeah, it could be. Which means we'd probably only use like a quarter of a block for each of these. We do have two solid outputs um, for each, so unless I want to do a overly designed uh, circuit-based dual output, which is the kind of thing I did a lot of last playthrough and I wanted to get away from and use bulk rail stuff and have way fewer entities and circuit calculations. I think this is just... We're just not going to use that much space in one rail block. And that's probably fine. We'll do junk data cards and thermo fluid output in one place. And the usual suspects down here. Looks like the rail is all connected here. Alright, um, I need to check if a couple of stack inserters will actually keep up with this. Oh wow, it's actually really slow in terms of items per second. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Wait, how many items is it? One, two, three, four, five. We can do eight train loads of stuff. Or that was with 40... Provide stack... Uh, cargo wagon size 40. Um... If we do 50 plus stacks of each... Six fives are 30, there's 20 stacks left. And that's if we let it run out of a resource before we... Before we summon the train. I think, actually, for the sake of storage space because of our future cargo wagons having larger, larger wagons, uh, we might want to do it like this. But then, with five resources, I guess I would need one of these to go sideways. Why is this backward?
Uh, and then... Like this? I kind of hate that. I guess I could do a half belt. Some of these. Would it actually save that much space? I'm not so sure. Hmm. Mind blown gif? Just noticed you can put stations against each other. Uh, like this? Yeah. You might want to separate them with signals this way. Um, so trains won't be able to go through this spot right here with the signaling because the because the signals are like on opposite sides like that it's it doesn't work like this way but yeah um you can put them that close let the spaghetti flow through you wait what oh you mean this it's funny how um, sometimes the builds that you think will be the simplest pose interesting challenges. Just because there's so many different solids going into this. Um, hmm. If you could only configure the loaders to filter certain items onto certain sides of the belt, there'd be way more versatility. But alas. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Mikelet, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Overconfidence is indeed a slow and insidious killer. Um, I like that we do have a middle tile for this. Maybe I could just... That looks kind of weird, but... That might actually be the tidiest way to do this thing. That's kind of neat. And then we could do... I'm sure this is pretty slow. 16.6 .6 per second. Uh, we could do a huge storage tank here. With pipe input that's going to slightly slow down the train's uh, unload time. But it's really not going to be a problem. Okay, yeah, I really doubt that we could get much more tidy than this. That's beautiful. Alright, let's do prod ones. Let's do it left to right on this side, just like here. And then we'll mirror uranium 238. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. The whole reason I was considering the extra container is we've got 320 stacks and we're looking for 50 times 5. Um, it's actually... Wait, it's actually only... Um, it's actually only 250 stacks. It's six inputs, but one of them is a fluid. So we should have like 70 stacks spare. And we can request like a few more... If we request 60 stacks of each, it'll summon a train when we're down to 10 stacks. Um, and we've got 20 stacks spare in the worst case, theoretically. That should be fine. Does this solve the storage space though? Stack inserters would be more compact. Stack inserters. Um... Well, we've, we've got way more space than we need for this build. If it weren't for the fact that we need uh, one, two, three output stations between these two, I could have done the whole build in a quarter block for each. But we shouldn't try too hard. 
to not use, like, to use all of the space in a rail block. It's fine. Um, where do I want to put the uh, junk and thermofluid? I wonder. I want a kind of symmetry for the outputs for the main products. It could always be a solar block? That's true. That's actually not a bad idea. Just spam solar panels once we've actually finished the build. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and one. We can do the same layout. Well, first let me do these filters before I forget. After uranium, there's vulcanite block and machine learning data. Machine learning data. And then this goes here. And of course, uh, since we're only doing the one fluid, we don't have to worry about any circuitry for that. All right, prod ingot 238. And I said we wanted to request uh, 60 stacks per cargo wagon, right? Per resource. So 120 stacks of prod 1 is 6k. I'll do the fluid before I forget. Plasma stream. Plasma? Plasma stream? I like to just request 100k, half of one of these huge tanks. Uh, and then, what other stack size do we have here? 50, 50, 100, 250. Alright, so... Ingot and machine learning data. They're also going to be 6k. Double it for uranium-238. And Vulcanite block, uh, 24k. Not 240,000, that would be bad. And we definitely only want long trains here. Uh, hmm. I was going to say, I do have an assumption here that the machine is going to consume from this side and this side evenly. It's not going to be a problem as long as I wait until we're low enough on each resource before we summon a new train. Maybe instead of like 20 extra stacks, we should drop it down to like 5 or something since the throughput is pretty slow. Or even less than that. Alright, so... Um, so like 5,500? No, 5,250. That's five extra stacks on top of one train load. So we have to be down to five stacks between the two of these before we summon another train. So even if it's imbalanced, probably in the worst case, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, 10,500. And... Uh, 21,000. That seems pretty good. And then 100, 100, 50, 200, 50. We don't have similar stack sizes this time. But I'm sure it will be fine. All right. Prod 
processing unit. Where's our stock size 100 thing? Uranium 235 was this much. Processing unit. Space transport belt. Uh, efficiency one is going to be half of that. Efficiency one. Trinite is going to be double, and machine learning data is also going to be this many. Cryonite rod. Cool. And thermofluid of the negative 10 degree variety. Seems good. And then we want to copy paste flip on this side. Wait, did I do the filters? I did not. Processing unit, space belt. Uh, green module, granite rod, and machine learning data. Perfect. And Perfect. That's a very tidy build. Okay. I think I'd like to just do the... Oops. Uh, the unwanted outputs over here. Looks good. And thermofluid. Whoops. Um, all right, let's, let's see. We only need a couple of filter outputs. It really does feel like a bit of a waste using a full block for this though, still. Maybe I could do something like this. What's the bunk for? Unloaders? It could always be a solar block, indeed. Uh, unloaders. What's the bunk for? What did I do? Let's do a 3B here. Um, can we fit a train stop there? Sort of. The other locomotive is going to be on an angle, but it looks like the cargo wagon would be straight. I would have to move this. What if we did do that? That's where that goes. What? Uh, one off. Oh, that's that's worse. How far back can I put this? Does that actually connect? I think it does. Aren't they supposed to be bulk rail loaders on the right? Oh, true. Yeah. The ones I deleted a minute ago. OK. 
Actually, I'm pretty sure this connects. And perhaps we could fit the same thing here. Maybe bring the final product a bit closer. How close could we bring it, actually? Uh, I think I decided we were just using short trains, actually, for the, uh, for the science packs. Because a, a, a long train, like two cargo wagons, is actually quite a lot. Alright, can we bring this all the way up to here, pretty much? That's not going to take from the assembly machine. Uh, I could even just put a filter inserter right here. That station layout is looking very neat indeed. I think I'll have to steal it. Thank you. I think that's the best possible compliment, probably. Um, let's get rid of this side, and we'll have like a half block to potentially do some other half block things later on. I should definitely use this more to clear these things out. It's definitely easier. Alright, since it's shared between the two of them, I would like this one to be basically in the middle. The output for... Uh, junk data cards. And I would like it to also be the output for thermofluid. Could I... Move this up a bit closer? Oops. Pretty close, actually. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Alright, so we've obviously got plenty of room for a long train in here. Um, I'll do... Signals on both sides there. We don't need a train to come in this way though. And then both sides over here. Both sides over there. goes here, and we can have our thermofluid actually maybe go this way. How many tiles is that? Nine tiles, that's perfect, and then one off for that being a perfect fit. Unfortunate, but considering how slow this will be, 2.5 per second, really not worried. Jean, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. LSF, good to see you again also. It is indeed bulk rail loader. Um, Alright, I'm actually really happy with this. We'll need some extra rail signals over here. I guess technically we really don't need these ones. Looks good. Right, I guess let's uh, test it. Which is going to be a little tricky, because I have to put five solid items. 
uh, into these, but considering how slow it is, it shouldn't actually be much of an issue. I'll just set this to set filters. It doesn't have a filter. Um, let's get rid of these superior long inserters. And I want superior filter inserter. Superior long filter inserter? There it is. Alright. Now I want to set this to blacklist set filters. Um, and it's basically going to keep putting stuff in until there is one of whichever item. How many filters do we fit on this? Only four, actually. And there's five items. Okay. I guess that could be a problem. Um... Hmm. It would be really nice if we had five filters on this. I think it's probably just going to end up... It's going to end up overfilling one resource, which is not going to matter as long as there's like one stack of each. But is it actually going to put all five in? I think it will. Shouldn't the junction exit signals be normal ones instead of chains? Junction exit. Oh, you mean like this one? Um, if there's a train stop here, it doesn't care that it's a chain signal, basically. But only a train that is stopping at this station can actually see this as a non-chain signal, effectively. Um, we got transport belts in this side, at least. So we've got all of our physical inputs anyway. Remember to connect fluid tanks to LTN, indeed. Alright, um, I guess let's do the same thing over here. Except... Like that. And then we need a uh, plasma stream on this end. Shift right click, shift left doesn't actually work on these. And negative 10 degree thermo fluid on this end. Cool. And then I'll just do a regular old filter inserter. Can I make some room in my inventory? That would be great. Regular old filter inserter to put the final product in here. And where would be the best spot. I wouldn't have been able to fit one of these here anyway. That's fine. Junk data cards here should be pretty slow. Really slow, actually. I'll just set the front to a single uh, cargo wagon. We'll push from the back to the front. And we'll set the provide stack threshold high enough that we don't need any um, fancy circuitry. Uh, the train will definitely be full before this stuff being in motion causes a problem. Doesn't matter since the entire junction is full of chains. How dare you. Um, this seems okay. I think it's already basically done. 
we need a output for junk data card and some undergrounds to make that work. And that's basically it. Maybe it would look tidier if this was an underground. Move it over a bit, perhaps. Yeah, I kind of like that better. Uh, I was going to say, where's our thermo fluid going? It's in the pumps. This pump can hold 500. But yeah, we can obviously beacon both of these with one wide area beacon, if we so desire. And considering we have belts and this huge storage tank directly connected, um, I think we can go as fast as we like here. Cool. Let's shove a single efficiency in and out. We'll do the station names. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. I can't fit the regular combinator in the regular spot. What'll we do? What are we bonking? South tank output not connected to LTN. Oh, true. So we've got all of those connected now. I don't think we need these test inputs anymore, especially with how slow these recipes consume. Uh, and we'll need these two connected also. Alright, I want short trains only. Provide stack threshold uh, 50. And that's it. This will be utility science pack provider. And this is rod science. And this one is active pickup because we really need to get rid of this stuff. Um, if it backs up, we can't make our actual desired product. Provide stack threshold, couple of train loads for the physical stuff because of the way we're doing this unmanaged belt. Uh, provide threshold for the fluids, 60k, long trains only, high priority. And this is junk, data, and... 25 degree thermofluid. Cool. Uh, and now we just need to get rid of the excess scaffolding. And we'll add a little more back in so it doesn't look too weird. Um doesn't need to be there. Looks odd. Alright, space platform scaffold. It's actually kind of mostly pretty neat already. I think I'll... Add a few tiles through here. And maybe like that. You know what, just fill this out. That looks pretty decent. 
Okay, let's blueprint this thing. Is it possible to cool thermofluid in place? It is, but I'm not going to be doing it for a couple of reasons. Um, I want to use the cryonite slush recipes for thermofluid other than um, 25 to negative 10 degree. And for 25 to negative 10 degree, there's more efficient recipes that take a lot more time. And I want to do that in a place where we can put lots of lots of machines next to each other. So basically it's more efficient, uh, or that we can do it in more efficient ways, uh, which I if we go to the trouble with more logistics, we can do it more efficiently. If we bring cryonite in to get to negative 100, negative 273, uh, or if we do the very, very slow recipes, um, it's easier that way. All right. Uh, prod and utility sites. Snap to grid 86251. And I think we are done. Why doesn't it? Oh, there we go. Alright, snap to grid looks good. We can rotate. Fantastic. And let's put this down here somewhere. I might shift all of these down a bit. That's a bit better. Alright, now let's go and actually build our two sciences. And let's try our construction train with its new system of automatically leaving. Very nice. Uh, wait for 20 seconds in activity. Actually, make it more than that because I want to make sure it doesn't come back before I'm ready. This blueprint book getting big? Yeah, it's actually like 3 meg to upload it onto Discord. I, I dare say we'll actually have enough scaffolding this time. I love how symmetrical that is. We're almost done on Personal Laser Mark III. Need to add a second stop or something because temp stops are deleted when they are satisfied. Uh, that's that's the idea? I, what's the problem though? I, I don't know if I understand. There is hiding some scaffolding under rails on south side. Scaffolding under rails? Nani? Looks okay to me. Oh, looks fine. Oh, we've already got a train on the way. I mean, yeah, LTN is pretty responsive, actually, with the settings that I've got. All right, uh, I guess I'll go deliver those efficiency modules. Thought you wanted the train to come back? Uh, I want to be able to set it so that, like, if if it didn't have enough stuff to finish this build on this trip... I could add another temp stop, um, which it'll carry out after it gets reloaded automatically. And then after it finishes that temp stop, it's going to go back empty and fill itself up, and then it's not going to loop, uh, loop around anymore. That's the idea. 
And we've actually got that, I think. Alright, back we go. On the same page. Cool. Tile looks like a heart. Yeah, it kind of does. Heart icon is a little too small. Oh yeah, let's add our tags here. Product science. And utility science. Fantastic. Here comes uranium. So... I was going to say that's all the basic uh, space sciences, but I forgot about... What is it called? Optimization tech card. Uh, that is a very straightforward recipe. Blank and optimization research we're going to get bring up from the ground. But I think... Uh, I think this would be an obvious candidate for something to put in the other half of this block. Since it's literally just two in, one out. Um, and since we can do it in... Or we'll probably have to do it in a space manufacturing. Probably a good candidate for direct insertion. Um, and maybe I could do something like the space train battery refurbishment in the other quarter of a block. Let's see. Well, let's once again add... You know what? What I could do is steal from myself here... ...by... ...turning this into... ...optimization tech card. Except it's literally just one in, one out, so I'm not actually going to use much of the same layout. Well, even so. Let's get our scaffolding in again. Start with a... Drop off. Won't necessarily need this. Although now that I think of it, I probably will. Oh well. Um, come to think of it, just for the symmetry of it, I kind of do want to steal exactly how far apart these are, potentially. Okay, optimization tech card, just like this, blank and optimize, blank, optimize, wait what, that's fine, and and what? What's the rate like comparing these? Uh, the optimization cards are much faster. It's probably fine. 
wrong filter. Blank. Optimize. Oh, we need optimization research data. True. Seems good. Let's do some test inputs. Should be fine. And we should be able to do once again the smallest. Actually, let me steal that layout again. There's no side outputs or anything this time. It makes five at a time, so let's maybe use a stack inserter. Also made in space? Indeed it is. Wait, what? Optim... No, 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 it's on the ground. Um, optimization... Er, that's byte of research data. Blank tech card. Oh. Where do we make... Um, oh, here it is. It's right next to it. Optimization research... Data, speed module, heat shielding, imosite crystal. Wait, did I bring Bita research data upstairs for no reason? Or does it go in? Somewhere. Let me have a look. Bita research data. I did set it up so that a train could bring it to space. It looks like I didn't bring it to space yet. Cool. So I don't have to potentially take hundreds of thousands of it back. Doesn't seem like there's even a train uh, to pick up Bita Research data. Where does Bita Research data go? It goes into military tech cards and nothing else. So we really don't need this. Alright, cool. Uh, so let me have a look again at what we did over yonder. We need Imosite Crystal, Heat Shielding, Speed Module, Imosite Plate, Machine Learning Data, and Lubricant. That's a mouthful. Do we have all of those in the rail network already? I know we have speed module, heat shield, machine learning data, imosite crystal, imosite plate. We absolutely do. Fantastic. Um, all right. So this, uh, this particular build is not going to be that simple. Why can't I? There we go. I think instead of summoning uh, optimization research data from the rail network, let me just check. Optimization research data goes into only one re uh, only one recipe. So we'll definitely want to do that on the spot. And how do we want this to look? Probably the exact same layout as what we were just using, actually. We've got five solids, one fluid for input. 
And then we'll just have one more machine before outputting to the rail network. Uh, so let's copy again. From here. The starters. Whoops. Optimization research data will obviously be requesting different stuff here. Uh, speed module. And I think I'll definitely put this on the opposite side of the same block. Heat shield. Uh, Immersite crystal. Immersite plate, immersium plate, and loop. Oh, and machine learning data is already in the right spot. And we'll want to request. Uh, what was it like? Um, like 55 stacks or something for each resource would leave a few stacks spare. I think that's what we did over here. Twenty-one thousand two hundred is 105 stacks. 5,250, indeed. I might just copy this real quick. Alright, we want 100. Stack size request. 60,000 fluids. Um, 5,250 speed 1 modules. Uh, same number for anything that's stack size 50, heat shielding, heat shielding, um, immersite crystal, immersium plate is 10k500, Machine learning data is obviously the same number. And... Oh. I miscounted. And lubricant. Hundred K should be fine. And this is... Oh, I didn't do the station names last time, I think. The... The Juvelia Capricorn of Priam. Okay, then. Oh, and I didn't activate the station either. Alright, let's just lay this out real quick. So, request a station... It's going into a space manufactory. It's making the science. And we're requesting uh, all kinds of things, actually. Vulcanite block, machine learning data. Uh, prod. Iron ingot, uranium-238. Prod, ingot, and 238. 
This one is... Utility Science Pack. This is Cryonite Rod. Um, efficiency Mod... Processing Unit Belt Efficiency Module. Processing Unit Belt and E1. Fantastic. All of these are named directly, I think. Fluid inputs into names are true. We need some plasma stream and some negative 10 degree. Very cool. And something similar over here, except it's, uh, we're making optimization tech cards. We're bringing in lubricant. Uh, I think this one was speed module. Oops. Speed, heat shield, immersium, immersium. And lubricant. Okay. That is quite the name. Let's put our output train stop down here. Even though it's not going to quite work like that. Oh, I just realized with the belts we can't, um... Well, I guess I could just lo use loaders here. Because it's going to be 50 per second. That's a lot more than we're going to need, I think. Wait, does that mean this belt is too slow for the machine? It actually does. Except I don't think this machine is going to need that much. And I have my doubts that we're going to need more than this. And then this can just go here. We have no side outputs this time, so I can get rid of this. And we have a provider station, uh, 50. Come to think of it, I might have set the provide stack threshold wrong on the other stations because it's short trains only. And this is optimization tech card. Cool, cool, cool. That's looking pretty tidy. No request for blank data card? No request for blank data... Oh. Hmm. Hmm. And we're already doing enough solid resources at this drop-off that adding another one would be a problem. I guess I could always do an unloader over here. And we're not going to be able to use this space for anything else. I think that's probably fine. Oh, 
one, so this can go over here. And we're literally just requesting blank. Going into space manufacturing and out comes optimization tech card. And we could just do it like this. Just a couple of train loads should be fine. So stack size 200. Uh, 40k. Looks pretty good, I think. And let's get rid of the excess scaffolding. Add a little bit back. Make sure we've got some behind this, otherwise it won't work. That kind of looks a little tacky somehow. I didn't mean to add some over there though. You know what? It actually looks tacky without a little bit of scaffolding behind this. That seems okay. Alright, let's blueprint optimization tech card. I won't snap to grid or anything this time. And that's basically it. Wrong number of clicks. Wrong number of clicks again. Alright, there we go. And we want to place this thing right about here. Oh, it's on the right. I kind of didn't see that. That's fine. Let's bring our construction train into the fold. Wait for inactivity. Oh, and let's turn this back on now. I also need to do a uh, plasma stream, and I'll probably want to do a block that does both plasma and the next step, if I remember correctly. How do you connect editor mod? Uh, yep, the mod is called editor extensions, and if you want to have this, uh, this surface that's like parallel to your main game that you can keep switching to. Uh, what you want to do is go to settings, mod settings, per player tab, and scroll down until you see editor extensions, and the setting is called testing lab. And just set that to anything other than off. Um, and it'll tell you if you mouse over this, uh, you might want to switch this setting right here off if you don't want to use it to cheat Blank data cards, indeed. Johan Anders? Anderson? Sorry. <laughs> it cut off. Uh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There's no request for blanks. Yeah, we did that. Should be fine. Why does it... Notice that when I switch to and from the navsat, the amount of light 
changes. Interesting. It looks like we have more light with the nav set. If I if I have the nav set, there's a light source around my cursor. Okay, is this done? Looks like it, pretty much. We are slowly bringing all the resources in. Uh, so next is going to be Plasma Stream. Which is... Going to go here. Let's add some scaffolding. And let's look at the recipe. I think there's only one machine that can do this. It is indeed the plasma generator. And plasma stream also goes into ion stream for which we need particle accelerators. Um, I'll obviously want to put... I think I'll do particle stream in a separate block. Probably, since it needs the two solid drop-offs as well. Hmm. Yeah, that should be fine. Same way we did it last time. Alternatively, we can do Proton Stream. That also, that also requires an input. Okay. Ion Stream goes into some recipes. But not into a whole other fluid like some other ones. Uh, particle Stream... Goes into antimatter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how do we make particle stream? Where's the recipe? Do I, am I looking at the wrong? Yes, I am. Where's the main recipe for particle stream? There we go. Material testing, sand, and plasma. I'm pretty sure it's going to be plasma and ion that we want to initially export to the rail network. Proton stream. Just goes into a few recipes. Alright, let's probably reproduce the same build from last time, but maybe a little bit smaller. With, first of all, plasma generators. Oh, they're bigger than I thought they were. It's lithium plus chemical gel. In that case, maybe it's a good idea... Um, to do the other recipe that wanted lithium. Lithium plus plasma stream makes proton stream. Could we do three outputs in one block? Would that be a good idea? Navset has infrared. Indeed. Empty null. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can also do proton stream here since it uses lithium too, but you don't have the recipe yet. Yeah. Do I want to do ion somewhere else? I don't think so. Oh, it needs rare metals. Alright, yeah. That's enough of a reason, actually. We'll do plasma stream and proton stream in this block, I think. And let me have a look at... Uh, 
if we go maximum speed but with efficiency. What kind of what kind of rate are we gonna get? Might want to flip that around. We're only outputting one thing, right? Should be pretty straightforward here. I don't think this can reach. It actually can. How much uh, chemical gel is this? Only 42 per second. That is peanuts. As far as fluid throughput in pipes is concerned. And I guess we'll just barely be able to fit it. Because we'll need a belt on the outside. Don't mind that it goes over the substation. Um, I'm guessing the lithium's pretty slow, even with all this speed. Yes, it is. This will have to go here. And that goes there. And we'll need at least one belt down the middle. Buster station goes here. Uh, chemical gel is our fluid. Can we fit a huge on this side? We can. Quite handily. Do I even care if... Um, well, I think I do. Probably. If it outputs unevenly. This is unfortunately a little bit in the way. Then again, the chemical gel is so slow. 84 per second, even at tier 9 module. Uh, we could probably just do it like this. Alternatively, I could make this the standard. That's, that's actually 50% more storage, although it's a little bit worse for the way fluids slosh about. But more importantly, we get the output going straight into a big container. Although it's actually a container that is... Uh, no, it's still bigger than the space fluid wagon. So as long as it's sufficiently empty, it should empty really, really quick. Um, maximum throughput for our lithium is less than 17 per second. Let's do the output this way. Make it nice and tidy. Or I guess a splitter makes more sense than having more unloaders, actually. It also looks better. Alright. Um, I'm not seeing a great... neat way to do our input pipes. Uh, it's super slow though, right? Less than 100. 
no matter how fast we get. How many tiles is this? 5, 10, 11? Uh, more like 15, actually. That's perfect. Except this will need an underground. And we don't need this going any further. And then... I guess right here, if not for that splitter, would be the perfect spot for this to connect. Uh, that's unfortunate. And I really can't move the whole build left or right. We're using literally every tile. Hmm. I guess I'll just have to accept a little spaghetti pipe. The horror. The horror. Um, but considering we need less than 100 per second for put with tier 9 modules, I'm really not that worried. Alright, so this is only a fluid output. We don't need loaders. Uh, what we do need is a provider station right about here. And a nice big juicy huge storage tank in the middle. Just down the cannon pot. Down the cannon pot. Do you mean get rid of this? Oh, you mean like this? Except then, uh, I would still ha I would still need like a. Maybe that's neater. Actually, yeah, I think I think I do like that better. I think that is tidier. I like that better. Thanks. All right. Now we do our output pipes. I don't think that's 15 tiles. It's 11. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no good way to get 11 tiles with 3, 5, 7. This is 12, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh yeah, 5 and 2 threes. I mean, it's not great, but it's not the worst, I guess. And we'll just need a few over here. Pump goes here. And... I forgot that we're not going to be able to reach across here. Um, we'll just do the usual excuse of... these pumps here. That looks kind of weird. So that we can piggy bank, uh, piggy bank? Piggy back across this uh, pump right here. We'll just give it an unconditional condition. Nine plus pump? Wait, what? Oh, nine plus pump. We could do that, but like, what's our max rate? It's only 840 per second. Uh, that's like 420 on each side. I don't think the pipe throughput is going to cause us any problems. Then again, a pump fits so perfectly here. I think that's kind of a good excuse. Nice. Hello, hello, hello. Rayclaw, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we up to today? Uh, mostly just working through the prerequisites of uh, our most basic space sciences, but in the rail network. 
redoing this stuff and getting it all working for our final proper base. We're up to a uh, plasma stream, and while we're at it, we want to do uh, the green one, wasn't it? In the same block. Just because of the way the uh, prerequisites line up, the, uh, the inputs. Proton stream needs lithium as well, which we've got here. So we need particle accelerators. And they are big thirsty things. 103 megawatts each without modules. And we can fit only a couple, or at best four on each side. Uh, I don't think uh, on each quarter, that's not going to happen though, because we need the lithium input as well. So I think we're literally just going to do eight of these. If we're going to fit them around one beacon. Um, alternatively... No, alternatively, I can't fit another one up here if we're only going to use one beacon. Which, maybe we use more. Maybe that's actually the way to go here. We'll see what kind of rate we get. What's the crafting speed of this thing? Uh, one by default. And one by default. That doesn't really tell us anything. 30 seconds to make a 100 plasma stream. 20 seconds to consume a 100 plasma stream. So they are... 50% faster. They're not 50% bigger, though. What's our rotation going to look like here? I'll just double check that is maximum speed, but with maximum efficiency. It is... I think we can just line, the, line it up in such a way as to ignore the sides. Yeah, we're really not fitting more over here. Alpha Ananas, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's our max rate of consumption for lithium for this entire block? With tier 9 modules. Only 25.2 per second. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so we could actually just splitter this over here. And what's our rate comparing consumption of plasma stream? We can consume half of it. And the other half necessarily goes to the rail block. Um, I think that's probably fine. Right? Uh, what's this called again? Proton stream? Proton stream goes into fusion test data, magnetic monopole data. It's quite slow, it looks like. This is 50. This is only 1. A 30% chance, though. Call it 3.5. Uh, this is 40. This is like... Uh, like 30-something. So it's all for just one tier of, I think, energy science. I think this is, I think we've probably got enough here. Probably. And if we ever need more uh, uh, plasma stream, 
We might just, like, do a double block like this. But for now, don't actually have to get rid of that rail. Because there's no outputs other than fluids this time. Flip that around. And I think I would like the in uh, the output to be in the middle. And we'll just bring it down this way. How fast is it? 420, I think. Yeah, only 420. Can't reach across with undergrounds. Uh, this isn't actually centered. Move all of these up one tile. And then we'll have a neater... That becomes ten tiles. But other than that, we should have a neater way around... Uh, around the beacon. Actually do this. That becomes nine again, and underground like this, and we have a nice consistent pattern. Why use cannon for lithium? Train is too much? Oh, the cannon is just a really convenient way to merge it. That's all. Um, there's... We're not actually using a delivery cannon. It's just a 3x3 three three chest. It's, it's the only 3x3 three three chest in the game. And if you put a chest next to a bulk rail loader or unloader, uh, there's some built-in invisible inserters that will give or take from the chest. So a bulk rail unloader will put all of its stuff into the delivery cannon chest. It does have limits to how fast it is, but for something this slow it's absolutely not a problem. Uh, and then we get that balanced, and we can, like, split it from the middle nice and neatly. That's all that is. Okay, so I would like... I think I'll do it this way. We'll have some of our fluid go up here. Get some undergrounds. And then... Uh, what would be the best way to do this? Seven tiles is slightly too short. Let's just do the same thing as we did on the output side. Except, in this case, that can reach down there. And like so. And that's one off, unfortunate. How many tiles is this? Six. Well, that won't do. Fifteen plus four, I think this is. Unfortunate. That looks good enough. And another three. Wait, what? Cannot... Cannot... Can it connect systems with different fluids? Oh, I remember this. I think it's because the... Um, the particle accelerators here have a proton stream output that goes to a plasma stream input. It's not actually going to cause any problems, but what I could do is rotate some of these and... Does that actually help? Yeah, 
I think I've confused myself. Oh, there we go. Green together, yellow together. Yellow on the left, green on the right. That seems good. And I'll copy-paste flip this. And it should now not think that it's going to mix fluids. Even though it wouldn't actually mix the fluids. Okay. Um, I think input... Oh, no, that's fine. We'll just do the one input belt in the middle then. Something like that. My inventory is full. Give me some fast inserters. And we'll go one, two, three, four. Sort of didn't realize just how few machines there are here. That's reasonably tidy. That is not. That'll do, I guess. All right, let's test it. So we've got... Lithium. We've got... Chemical gel. Chemical gel. Set up the requests here. Lithium is over here. Chemical gel. And we're making uh, plasma. in a plasma generator. Why does it look like there's a gap there? And we're also making proton stream in a particle accelerator. That seems descriptive enough. Let's not forget to tell LTM what we've got here. And I don't really care if we tell LTM what's in here. It'll work out either way. We can just request like one train load of lithium into these two containers. 60k and 100 stacks. Long trains only. Lithium is 50, 100, and uh, 100k chemical gel should be fine. We've got room for 250. And it looks like all of that is working. Except for the part where we didn't do our inputs. Whoops. Alright, I think that's looking about as tidy as it could get. Let's remove the speeds for now. Plasma and... Uh, particle accelerator. Out you go. What kind of rate can we expect before we speed it up? 80 plasma stream per second and 40 proton. Or 40 plus 40. 40 of each until proton is saturated. 
And this is going to be Plasma Stream Provider. And this is going to be Proton. And all we need here is the 60k ride threshold. Short trains or long trains can pick it up. We don't care about that. And then we give it a couple more signals. Uh, I don't actually need extra signals up here, since we only have the one drop-off station. Ten times the difference? Yeah, it's, uh, tier 9 modules are pretty strong, to say the least. To say the least. But for this stage of the game, we'll just put a single efficiency 3 in. To minimize the power cost. And let's remove most of the excess scaffolding. Uh, and then I'll put some of it back. Put a look of it. Whoa, what? Interesting. Oh, you can actually change like each graphical bit of... wow, that's cool. Interesting. Anyway, uh... Back to none. Let's remove this. Alright, let's get some more scaffolding, just so it looks a bit more tidy. And how many tiles across is this? Um, I don't know, but we'll do it this way. Whoops. That's actually probably fine. Don't need these. And I definitely don't want all of these random gaps in here. That doesn't look too bad. Alright, let's blueprint this thing. So, Plasma Stream and Proton Stream. Eighty-six, twenty-five, and one. For our snap to grid, tiles, train stop names, and I think we are good. Check the snap to. Looks good. We can rotate it if we ever want to. And I forgot to throw it in here. There we go. Alright, let's build this thing. Where should we put it? It takes in chemical gel. Lithium is really, really slow, um, but it's over... Huh. I don't think I've brought lithium up yet. We'll have to add a block to bring up potentially another eight. Oh, here it is. Here's lithium. Cool. Um, so this is the block that the first block that needs plasma stream, and this is chemical gel. So I think here makes about as much sense as anywhere for our first build like this. Let's grab our construction train. Um, this is actually an example where I'm sure it won't have enough scaffolding the first time. So here's what we're going to try and do. Inactivity, 15 seconds. And then come back here again with inactivity, 15 seconds. After it does a lap. 
or maybe a bit more inactivity next time, because I want to catch it when the scaffolding is all placed. So I can place uh, the rest of the blueprint. This one needs a lot more scaffolding than usual. How much in total? Uh, 3.8k. That's like almost double of what we normally carry in the construction train. I wonder if science is still going. It is... maybe? We're not researching this very second, but I see motion everywhere. We're missing material one. We've got some... actually we've got material one and two. And energy two is no doubt what we're actually stuck on. Energy two is... I don't even remember where. This is energy catalog one. Where did we... Make energy two. I don't even know anymore. Energy science pack two. Oh, it's way over here. It's missing broad catalog. Broad catalog is missing atomic data. Uh, is this atomic? No. Atomic data is missing material testing pack. Material testing pack is missing imosite crystal. Did we ever request imosite crystal? We did. 5,000. Is that enough? Um, is 100 stacks. It should be enough to trigger a delivery. Did we run out of crystals? Uh, kind of, yes. So we're basically out of Inosite Crystal. Um, alright. Let me first just see if our train does what we want it to do. I guess it's not going to fully recharge. Good thing we put those solar panels in. Um, oh yeah, and we should be on the second lap already, actually. We are indeed. Make more crystals faster? I think it's not... Uh, it, we're literally just out of them. Um, our processing is more than fast enough. Mr. Gigadrone, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I want to just make sure I place this blueprint um, as soon as the bots are done. And then we'll go and make a mine. Hurry up, bots. Almost there. Kind of. And we're done skiing. Fantastic. Oh, and while we're here, I can set yet another temp stop. Because I suspect we're going to run out of something. And we'll come back here yet again. After we resupply. As soon as the bots stop moving. Alright. Uh, where can we find... Entity... Immer... Raw Immer. Raw Immer site. 
we've got only 46k, but it's right here. Oh, that's a lot of trains. Oh no. Might have to have a look at that. In fact, let's put off the Immersite for a second. Um, what happened here? This is the old, uh, the old design. I think that's, that's the entire problem. How many trains are waiting here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 trains are queuing up, apparently all for copper. Um... Because I did a everything instead of an anything a long time ago before I improved this design a little bit. Whoops. It's a queue all right. Indeed it is. All right. Well, that'll sort itself out. Um, let's get a nice big juicy mine of Immersite. If we can find one, 92, 189, that's pretty far away. Uh, looks like 189 is literally the biggest mine on the planet, though. And these are only going to get further away. I think it's sort, I think it sorts by distance, depending on where you are when you do the search. But it doesn't necessarily know what's closest to our existing rail system. Um, what happened to the Immersite that we were getting from one of the other planets, though? That's what I'd like to know. I really... My mouse is starting to misbehave. Just clean that up a little bit. Alright, that seems better. Uh, oh, this is pretty close. 141k? And we'll just have our rail go through here. And over here. Actually, I don't even need to add anything else. I'll do both sides there. That's good, that's good, and... Both sides there. Simple. I'll double check our construction train has the right type of mine. I don't think it does. What's it called? A quarry drill. Don't think we have any quarry drills. Let's add some here. One stack. Do we have some in the block? We do not. Let's add... I added it to this, right? Let's add it over here. Wait, what the... What? Wait, what? No. Oh, no. Oh no. Um, efficiency and speed module were on their own combinator on this side. Okay, quarry drills should already be on their way. Here they come. Fantastic. And just a few more seconds before we can get our construction train over here. At the past version, Emma doesn't isn't made at Nalvis. This isn't Nalvis, this is Hagen. We moved it. We moved our main base. Move Navsat to where your rail system is and then refresh. That's a pretty good idea. 
I also, while we're waiting for a few seconds, want to check on... Was it Gibbel? No. Exorion? Probably. Uh, Exorion was where we've got all these raw imasite caves. Um, and we made a... Oh. I never got around to it. Uh, I need to go here and update it a bit. Was it Krannis? No, it wasn't Krannis. One of our outposts has a block for processing uh, raw imasite at least once. Yeah, it, crushed imasite and glass we're sending back um, just to get better stack efficiency. But it looks like I haven't built another imasite mine for a while. Yeah, it's all empty. Alright, let's get our construction train... Oops. To pay this a visit. Wait, which planet was it? Oh no. Oh no, which planet was it? That's a lot of imasite. Two million. I really need to get this one going. Uh, I literally can't remember. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. There we go, just in time. Alright. I don't want to pick up trees or rocks. Just get rid of this, please. And I guess don't actually get rid of that, otherwise we don't have a path back home. And off you go. Now then, there's a nice juicy raw imasite mine over here. And this is the one where we've already got everything set up. Um, I might... need... station... like here. Rail down this way. Get rid of those. Add some chains. We've actually got a lot of ghost rail signals here. Um, but also... Also like this. So you can go back home. Is our train ready? Not yet. How do you kill biters on all the planets? Uh, eventually you can automate it. You can actually get energy beams that can be used as a weapon. Oh, it's saying it can't get back. Uh, over here. Over here. Could could you perhaps stop no pathing? There you go. And take this while you're at it. Do we not have a way to build signals? We've got lots of signals. I don't know if I have... I do have them automated. Okay, cool. Just haven't placed some of them. Rockets away. So it's the iridite planet that gives us... that will give us Imasite. While we're waiting for that to load for a sec, let's get our construction train back on Hagen. 
to visit this spot. Wait indefinitely. And we'll go build an emesite mine on Hagen. Uh, is it Gibil? Yes, it is. We've loaded our construction train again. Let's place these extra signals. And that's actually quite a lot of stops. Maybe I should just enable the bots jumping out while the train is in motion. That is, wow, that really is a lot of stops. Uh, wait indefinitely at that spot. Alright, back to Hagen. Our train is just arriving. Perfect. Da -da 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 -da. Fantastic. And then park yourself over here, please. And then over here. Should actually get everything in range. Nope, 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 stop, 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 stop. Don't loop, you've got a double head. Why are you like this? Alright, that should do it. Let's place another bulk rail loader. Get some blue belts. Straight into here. And get some power. Should not quite do it, actually. Now everything's one tile too far. Alright, hopefully that'll reach. Yes, it does. Alright. Limit this to 40 stacks to keep it balanced. Um, get our default template over here. And that should pretty much do it. As soon as we get the power poles built. And unfortunately these bots are going to have a long trip to get back home. I might just set it to wait a long time, like 10 minutes at least, when it empties for the bots to get back. Two-third Cerderus train? Wait, what? Oh, two-thirds of, of a Cerberus? Muthi J. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's our... Is research moving now, or is it just... Is it busted, or is it slow? Oh, right. We don't have the site. I forgot. Material testing packs these days require Immersite crystal. How's everything else? 
Oh, we don't have plasma generators and particle accelerators in the train. I don't think I've even built them yet. Alright, so... Plasma gen is only stack size 5. Particle accelerator is even worse. Um, what are the prereqs for them? I think that's all stuff that's already in the big chest. And same for this one. Shouldn't have to do anything new. Do we not have accumulators? We do not. Accumulator, 50. And let's whitelist it. And then... Uh, the other thing was nothing, actually. We need space assembly machines. Which we should have. We do have them. They've just all been dumped in here. Alright, cool. That's happening. How many do we need for the build? 24 and 8. Do we have room? I think we do. Actually, if it only stacks to 5... I think I'll just grab those myself. And plasma generator. 24. And that's all but one. There we go. Let's remove those temp requests. We're not going to put those in the construction train. They just stack so poorly, and we don't build them that often. How's our power? Surprisingly good, considering um, I still haven't connected it to the main base. It's all just running off of the solar panels down here. I guess there's actually more solar panels um, in this area by now. Uh, I saw 600 or so before I got halfway through. As opposed to, like, maybe 400 with the flat solar panels. Yeah, there's actually more power on this side at this point. So that's our plasma stream, which means that is our proton stream. Fantastic. Very good. And that's, uh, I was going to say that's actually the only thing missing here. Apparently we don't have that much machine. We do have... Oh. Wait, what? I think I see what happened here. I was going to say, apparently we don't have that much machine learning data, but it's totally saturated. Um, I just had the train load and a half provide threshold, but this is a different layout. So... But I th think... Here we're requesting request stack threshold 100, and this is only 80 stacks. Um, because I was think because over here I was working with what was that? Hold up, what planet is that? Nalvis? What the what the Nalvis? We got hit by a meteor on Nalvis. Since when? It's no ammo. 
What's missing to make ammo? Uh, everything. Okay. Wait, the only belt that I see empty is copper. I thought we fixed... Well, maybe temporarily fixed. Did our copper mine just run out? What about coal mining? Coal mining is stuck. Don't tell me. No? I don't see trains stuck around this thing. It's actually just stone everywhere? Hmm. Do we not have a drop-off for stone? I guess not. This is supposed to be stone. I haven't requested the stone here. Well, there's your problem. And let me just check the other settings. I think I need to say... that coal is not available at this station and stone is not available at this station. So I need to do like a negative a million for each of those resources. Because those wires are all connected. I definitely want to redesign this. Like, even if this works perfectly after I've tweaked it, um, it's kind of, it's, it's very confusing to look at, even for me. But basically we've got a shared drop-off just because that's how things fit together here. Um, and we can do two resources, two solids and two fluids. Um, storage and, if necessary, destruction, um, at each of these. Apparently our landfill is actually backed up. Wow. And where does the stone go? It's going to go into the crusher and get turned into sand. Um, that's not going to work. Well, it'll get things moving uh, for a while after all of this fills up. Time to panic, indeed. That's already 12k plasma, 5.9k proton stream. I think the pumps are making it really prioritize putting the plasma stream in here. That's probably fine, to be honest. Um, Alright, where's our imasite mine? Hey, there's a train coming. Fantastic. So that is 1.133k. Uh, I should go put some prod modules in it. Let's see. Quarry drill, prod threes. And let's grab our construction train again. Oh yeah, I was... Uh, giving the bots a chance to fly back. It looks like they're done. So let's get rid of this extra condition. Um, and then I want to... I should have given it the temp stop before the loading happened. And I could have queued it up. If I give it a temp stop now, it'll leave the station without prod modules. We literally just need six prod modules. We do have them. It's putting everything but the prods in. Oh my 
got uh, there we go. There's our prod modules. Okay. Have to load the entire train. But we got there eventually. Hopefully we won't get traffic blocking us from getting in there. I mean, it won't cause a deadlock, it'll just mean the train picks up one more load. Does the new lazy mine work? We're gonna have to wait for another 1.2 million stone to disappear before we get our confirmation. It's gonna take a minute. Uh, and what about on the erudite planet? Hey, another rocket away. Alright. Oh, I left our construction train parked here the whole time. Whoops. Wait for plenty of inactivity. Actually, wait there. Make sure I can... You don't have stations? Why don't you have stations? Bulk rail loader. We've got eight. I thought it finished loading. Oh, I didn't even ask it to load it. Bulk rail loader. Take a couple each time at least. And quarry drill. We've got plenty. Alright. Could I do the same thing here? I think I could. Uh, read... Stop to train T. Enable disable T equals zero. And... We can set this to inactivity. And then we can have this train come back here automatically after it gets loaded. And it shouldn't go around in circles. Uh, it also might not be able to go around in circles just because there's no loop here and it can't, like, back into a station's position even if it is a double header. Does the underground belt reach further in SE compared to vanilla? In K2 it does, yes. And the pipe reaches further as well, but not the space pipes or space underground, sadly. Got that bit of arbitrary difficulty slash annoyance to deal with still. Are you able to leave? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Why didn't you finish? No, stop. Oh, no. Oh, it hasn't even... I don't think it ever got loaded. So it should go empty and then load, wait for inactivity, and then come over here, wait for inactivity. Should. Being the operative word. And empty, and load. That's a lot of rail, actually. It's not able to load logistic train stops. No, 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 that's the problem, that's the problem. Alright, go to emptier for now. Um, why don't we have logistic train stops? Because we don't have constant combinators, because we we just didn't output them. Do we have a couple of these? We do, thank goodness. And there's our logistic train stops. 
Beautiful. So we're trying to load literally one more of these. Why is it not? Because we're not outputting this either. Okay. Okay. Did we at least place all those sig- We didn't place all of those signals previously. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna- I'm gonna do it. Enable logistics while moving. Good day, Koha. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we are loaded. Fantastic. Let's try this again. Wait for inactivity. NXT... NX... Uh, NXT main? Thank you for the follow and the prime sub. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. And a welcome, welcome. I think that's probably the first time someone followed and then subbed within two seconds of each other. Uh, thank you very much. And here comes our construction train with actually what we need this time. Uh, except I didn't give it any belts. Okay. Why am I like this? Do we have delivery cannon chests? We do. Do we have belts? Yes, we do. And the the boying, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I haven't automated belts here, so I want to be a bit careful. Oh my goodness. Uh, Smile. The boying, thank you very much for the two months of the Prime. I'm not sure how that follows from just following. Uh... Loam Dog, thank you very much for the Prime Sub. What is going on? And for starting a hype train as well. Thank you so much. And welcome, welcome also. Very much appreciated. Alright, we've got undies, we've got uh, splitters, we've got belts, we've got loaders. Cool. We only need a few. But we may as well make sure we have plenty. Following is overrated. Been watching for months. Okay then. SEK2 is a complicated beast. I still dream about it from time to time. Indeed. The Tetris effect. Bradjack, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, do we actually have everything we need this time? Delivery cannon chest. Okay. Let's try for the 50th time. Inactivity. And we need... I would prefer to have a cannon chest. Limit this to 40 stacks each. Connect it to LTN. Give it our default pickup. Give it a loader. And just belt it. Power poles? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. No, please. No. Okay. That's... That's one more trip to make this work, I guess. Power poles. At least we've got a few of those.
And then once it gets back, I want it to go finish the job. And wait for inactivity. One more trip, indeed. Too hard to just make three drills? Yeah. I really should have done a standardized auto crafter build with these places. So I can just be sure that we've always got XYZ basic uh, stuff to make another outpost. Because the way my train loader works is, um, unfortunately, if we don't have three logistic train stops, it's going to get stuck on trying to load the logistic train stops indefinitely. It may be a little bit excessive with some of these items we're loading. Alright, looks like we're ready again. And off it goes automatically. Beautiful. What's the bet that this time we actually get crystals? Uh, raw imasite, that is. I've not touched Factorio in nearly two years. Fair enough. Before I streamed it, Factorio was very on and off for me. Like, programming, actually. I, I would do it a lot, occasionally and then not at all for a very long time. We did it! Okay, and apparently we don't have a constant combinator. I'm going to cry. Ah. Uh. Once more with feeling. We're at least we've at least got the mine in motion. It's just that uh, LTN won't send any trains here until we get that constant combinator in place because my default settings um, have a provide threshold so high that it'll never be met. Started a new Factorio run a couple of days ago after a longish break, and it totally got me hooked again. Yep. It do be like that. Enix Steamate. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I mean, I already said that, but welcome anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a very on and off game. Well, before I streamed it, it was anyway. Alright. We'll check back here a bit later. Research is still stuck. That's not surprising, actually. Uh, it's going to take time for the Imasite Crystal to come up. Um, but other than that... Why don't we have cool Thermo Fluid? Cool... Thermo... I can't actually really see the uh, icon for the super cold thermo fluid, so I might make it the thermo fluid instead, just because it's got the most contrast with the blue here. Alright, we are making... We've got no copper and iron plate here. Oh. Okay. I think it's literally just... We don't have enough trains, and although overall the rate that we make thermofluid at is very slow, um, it takes a lot to get a good amount to get started. And we've been making just a tiny amount, actually, of negative um, 100. Apparently we haven't made any negative 273. We've got negative 10 here. How much is it? 51k. Oh, and I set the provide threshold to 60k to future-proof it. So I could go ahead and just invite 
our fluid wagon to bring that real quick. Except our fluid wagon is busy. Ooh, there we go. There's our first prod science. Well, first prod science in the rail network. Uh, looks like we've got all of the physical inputs and plenty of space left over at that. Fantastic. Nice. Uh, I think I do want to limit these to 50 stacks. Same goes for this one. This is 40, actually. I'm going to change it to 50. And this one is also going to be 50 stacks. What are we missing? Of course, Immersite Crystal and Machine Learning Data. We've got plenty of it, we just don't have enough trains. Actually, we don't have that much Machine Learning Data yet. I wonder what our rate is if all of this was moving continuously. Um, we're actually extremely negative on Machine Learning Data. Uh, if if everything was going at full speed consistently we've got like 10% what we need to keep up with this all right let's check back on our imasite planet ibil indeed has Raw Immersite about to fill up. I don't suppose we've already had a delivery of here. Nope. Oh, 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 it's scheduled. There's a train out of fuel. It's the construction train? How? Probably because this requester doesn't have any requests. Um, okay. Well, it's already in range of... It's already in range of the robot network. We can fix it without even doing much. That was lucky. Cursed construction train. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, does the back have... it has coal for some reason. Yeah, that should work. Except that... No, it's fine, it's fine. It The bulk rail unloader doesn't take from a uh, locomotive, and the... Bulk rail unloader is lined up. The cargo wagon when we stop at this station is lined up just so that won't go in. Right, cool. We're good to go. Get out of everyone's way, you buffoon. And there we go. Raw Immersite, or crushed Immersite, is going to come back on this rocket. Fantastic. So that is 713,000. That's going to be a lot more, even without prod modules, than this 120,000. Why don't you use processed fuel? Um, because it's more of a hassle on that planet with the outpost. And because we have petroleum that we... We have excess petroleum that we have to get rid of, whether we like it or not. Um, so we turned that into solid fuel, or well, we turned it into solid fuel before wasting it over here anyway.
So, because what we need from oil is light oil, so we can make uh, liquid rocket fuel. But with K2, uh, we can't turn like solid fuel into rocket fuel into solid rocket fuel. Um, it has to be made out of, for example, light oil. So we end up with uh, excess petroleum, which we turn into solid fuel. And then when that's completely full, we just start venting petroleum so that we can keep making light oil. Um, but yeah, that is working. Beautiful. Fantastic. Wish we had prod modules here. Oh well. It'll do for now. I mean, it'll that planet will carry us until we have uh, an actual core fragment planet for... Whatchamacallit? Immersite. Hey, we're finally making the thermo fluid again. And did we get it delivered over here? We did. Let's change this uh, threshold back before I forget. Very, very good. It's going to take quite a while to saturate, but that's okay. Because it mostly gets, almost all of it gets recycled. Uh, literally, like, what is it? A fifth of a percentage of it is lost. There's no loss except for when we go from 25 degree to 10. Um, but it does cost us Phrynite Slush to do the better recipes over here. To go from negative 10 to negative 100, negative 100 to negative 273. Uh, and if we didn't use the Crynite Slush, more of it would come back as 25 degree thermofluid, which means more loss. But yeah, we're just slowly building up um, what is going to be a rather large volume of thermofluid that's going to go around in circles. Five hundred minus four nine nine recipe is too slow. That's why we do it somewhere centralized, and I can always make another block like this, and I can give this a beacon if I want to. Okay, so what's next? I wonder how long until we get some immersite up to. Oh, no, wait, that's hardly any. That's leftovers. Nice. There's our prods for crushed immersite. I didn't production module this. We can't actually. And I did prod module this. And this. Alright, cool. And I have set it up so that how slow is this? Four point seven six emisite crystal per second. It might be time to give that a beacon. Let's go grab one or several. That's like more than 10 seconds for a stack. Down we go. Immersite production chain is still the favorite thing to be added. Oh yeah? Did we get a... yeah we did. Blank tech card drop off there. Still my favorite thing. Yeah, I figured that's what you meant. All right.
Typing too fast. Fair enough. Is that the jetpack mod? Yeah, it's actually built into SE. Ah, uh, the jetpack mod is. Is this empty? It's actually totally empty. Let's get rid of it. And now we have a whole empty block. Right next to the signs. Have I not upgraded and prod moduled the science? I have not. How many is it going to take? Uh, let's see, that is 242 plus 88. Three thirty times four, thirteen hundred and twenty prod modules. Yikes. How many have we got here? Like a fifth of that, maybe? Where am, where am I going? Here we go. MSI crystal. Beacon. And... However many speed modules we can have, without going completely overboard with power. Negative 60%. How fast is it now? 16.666. Uh, that is a lot faster. This can consume 90 immersium sulfide per second. And this build can only supply 100. I think that's probably fine for now. We're very negative on crushed immersite. I'll go put a beacon up there. Even though we're definitely going to bottleneck on actually bringing this stuff here. Plus 20% power I could probably live with depending on the ratio. That's actually net positive for crushed. So... Let's slow it down a little bit more. Minimum power consumption almost. Still positive. And negative 80%. Still just barely positive. That's perfect. 50 crushed emesite per second. And I've actually got a bottleneck of... No, I don't. Two belts. Yeah, that's actually really, really good. We can't speed these up, so let's just give them some efficiencies. I mean, we can speed them up, we can't prod them. Yeah, that is a lot faster, <laughs> to say the least. There should be a vanilla train on its way to pick this up. There is not. Oh, there will be in a second, once we hit 4k, once this gets here. Should be already moving. There it goes. And that's going up to space. Beautiful. Using elevator without train is just freefall, I guess. I think our science is moving already. That shouldn't have happened yet, should it? Well, no, it has happened. Maybe I just missed a delivery. Take me back to space. Fantastic. Just a little bit of rail missing over here. Let's get our construction train to pay it a visit. Alright, 
Alright, that'll keep us going for a while for MSI. What's next? Good question. I need to put an efficiency module over here. Wait, why is it looking for... oh. There we go. As our utility science packs, prod science packs, uh, space science packs, of course. I might already. Oh, I want to put a beacon up here, actually. Let me out. Speed up our machine learning data already, but I might still double it. We've got a few hundred megawatts of power to spare. Alright, beacon... Um, didn't really bring enough speeds, probably. And I guess I probably would like to put speed modules in here. Well, I guess I'm going back downstairs. Up we go. Slightly to the right. Give me a few speeds. Give me... I don't know what... My inventory's a bit full. Why do I have Holmanite? Why do I have Holmanite? Probably from when there was that rocket crash. There we go. Let's drop by the mall for a sec since we're already here. Get rid of some of my superfluous stacks. Um, that's a bit better. Give me some more modules. I'll leave some in the mall upstairs. Don't think we really need prods up there, for the most part. Into the elevator. And we were going back here. Alright, let's use module inserter uh, for computer, couple of speed modules, and go. And what do we got? Plus 40% power. This is 10.2, it's like a third, if these machines were to go full speed, which realistically they won't in the long run. Um, we'd have a third of what we need to keep up with them. Let's go a little bit more efficiency. Minus 50% power? One more and I can minimize their power consumption. Whoops. And that's still 8.96 per second. Doop -a doop. All right, let's uh, let's double. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is my 
I've got no scaffolding. Let's bring our train over here. Wait for me. And we're going to double our supercomputer build here. Can pretty much just copy paste. Can I actually flip this? Oh, I can too. Nice, that makes it easy. Here comes train. And we'll start by copy pasting this. We can just connect the looks connect these. I'm pretty sure the thermofluid throughput rate will be slow enough. Yep. At the pipe speed doesn't really matter. And we need to connect the output somehow. Probably down here. fit together. Not that well, probably. 15, 16. 9 and 7, I guess. I kind of want a 7 to connect this. Then we could have 9 and 4. 7. 7 and 6. My math is terrible. 5, 5, and 3, I guess that'll do. And I don't suppose this is 15 tiles? It is not. But we can turn this into a 3B. Alright, so the output is all connected. The input is all connected. The resources, the, the belts, are not. We need blanks and green circuits. Should I do another drop off on the right? Just to make it more tidy? What, what's our max rate if we double this? Uh, less than half a belt of blank. Less than one belt of electronic circuit. Except, I don't think we're in a great position to steal from what we've already got here. Unless... No, I don't really like that. Let's just... Do another drop-off on this side. Apparently I placed that wrong. Right, oh, we're good. And we'll add some extra scaffolding until we decide what to do. Copy paste. Actually, don't copy paste. Turn that off. Copy paste change this up so we're not asking for thermo fluid on both sides and that should do it and then we're basically going to do the same thing but flipped over 
here. Seems good. Turn the other side on again. Tree. No name. Good catch. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Pajamas. Good to see you again. Also, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did you turn on the original? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, apparently, we need more belts already. That's not that surprising, actually. And I want to clear this up. And this up. And I guess this as well. And that looks pretty tidy, actually. Cool. Construction train, go back home and then come back to the same spot. And then wait for inactivity. And the build should be complete. Uh, except for the part where we haven't made the output belts go where they need to. If we double this, we're up to less than half a belt of machine learning data, but also the same amount of scrap. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna half assed merge them where we only use one side of the belt, besides which I can't squeeze this through. I'm considering having this output go up the top and just merge over here. As opposed to trying to squeeze it over here. I guess I could put... Nope. I was going to say I could put a splitter like this and block the left side output. But this underground pipe is in exactly the wrong spot. I could remove it, I suppose, but I don't want to do that. So we're just going to have our outputs go up to the top, and then find their way over here. Wait, how much? Oh, I think I did calculate this already. If we double it, it's 18 times 2, which is less than one belt. It'll be fine. Uh, so space belt. I kind of want to merge it properly here regardless. just to make sure each side of the belt has equal amounts. Where's our train? It's going back. Did I not give it a weight condition over here? Wait for inactivity lots. I think it did come and I totally didn't even notice properly. Alright, I need to borrow a... here we go. Blocked... a half blocked splitter. Right there. And then... should just be able to fit that. And we can just merge it in down here. Um... If it was higher throughput, maybe we'd split it over here as well, but like, as I said, the entire, um, oh, this all goes to only half a belt. Um, all right then. Splitter it is. Is our train coming back now? Yes it is, fantastic. That looks kind of weird now. I don't like it. 
It's not that bad though. And last but not least, we need to put these belts here. At least the train already carried the computers, because they don't stack too badly. Alright, so why is it not making anything? Because it doesn't have fluid because, don't tell me, we're short like one space underground pipe. Alright, I can fix that. How many do we actually need? 26? Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense actually. Alright, well, go back and do it again then. Maybe I should get our train to carry more than one stack of space underground pipes. Seems good, as long as there's an enough room. After upgrade it will be bottleneck? Was that because of the half belt? That we fixed? Meanwhile, we're just churning through machine learning data. No trouble. And that's our optimization tech cards as well. Nice. So we've got all the so-called basics. Um, we've got space science pack, production science pack, utility science pack, and optimization tech card uh, in the rail network in space now. We've also got all of the red, green, military, blue, and yellow tech cards. Not to mention blanks, um, because that's a prereq for this one, at the very least. We are well on our way. Did we get this built? Apparently not. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere. What, what are we missing? Still 25 space undergrounds. Huh? I suspect there's not enough room... Oh. Something is failing to get loaded into this cargo wagon. Let me go get the pipes. It's probably that we've run out of inserters and I haven't actually automated them here. underground pipes is this actually? 247, that's five stacks. For the entire block. Or close to that. It's probably six stacks. Rounding it up. But yeah, we now have just under 18 machine learning data per second. I dare say that's enough. Probably enough for the whole game, I hope. Alright, let's head back to the mall. Where we have... Lots of inserters, actually. All six types. I wonder what we ran out of. I don't remember automating the inserters here. Oh, we're probably trying to load, like more blues than we have or something. No, we've got 757. I'm, I'm surprised just how many inserters we have here if they're not actually automated. We have two plus scrap or belt throughput? What? Have two plus to add scrap for belt throughput. 
Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we did. It's, um, so it's 17, it's just under 18 times 2, which is 36, and the belt can support, uh, 45 per second. And we're putting items onto both sides of the belt equally, so there's no problem there. Oh, wow, what's going on here? Oh, we're saturated. That's what's going on. Nice. It's still enough? Yeah. Yeah, the space transport belt can do 45 items per second, or 22.5 items on each side of the belt. Uh, input, I should have checked, but I'm pretty sure it's fine, is less than one belt of electronic circuits and less than 18 blanks. We've got one, two, three, four half belts of each, so like two whole belts of input um, that this belt layout that can support for each resource. Uh, but yeah, very cool to see machine learning data so casually saturated. And we've actually got a pickup for scrap that we can witness. And make sure that's all working automatically. So this is going to go to LTN to vanilla uh, storage. And then once we've got... Oh. Oh no. Let me go fix that real quick. Wait, are we looping again? Um, I guess so. Back you go. I forgot to limit the front uh, cargo for this one. I was, I've considered a couple of times, I don't know if I've said it out loud yet, but if the cargo wagon stack size is 50, and we're doing, like, pushing from the back to the front unconditionally, then maybe I should just limit the front thing to, like, 40. And basically, if I limit it to 40 or 20 stacks in the front or something, depending on the rate that it gets pushed through and how long it takes to load the train, we can actually just say provide stack threshold is actually exactly two cargo wagons and be sure that that'll sort itself out. Tumbling Satellite, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I see that space is being explored and colonized in an appropriate manner. That pleases me. Okay, good. We have Vanilla Train coming to pick up scrap. It will take scrap down the space elevator. And for some reason it already has scrap in it. What the hell? What's going on here? Oh, because I didn't put an because I didn't put a condition on this schedule here. Empty cargo inventory. So it's been going around in circles, just wasting space cables. Uh, what? What? No, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Which stop was I on just now? This one. Uh, apparently there's no stop with this name. Scrap. Request a... Vanilla pickup? That's not right. Hold up. Down to Hagen, depot, scrap requester. It should be this one. Scrap requester with all this stuff. Maybe it was literally just a misclick. Alright, down to Hagen, go to depot, and once this station has train limit greater than zero, go there and empty cargo. I'm glad I watched and checked this thing, made sure it was working. Uh, once you've done that, go up the elevator, go to depot, wait until this thing has scrap available to pick up. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. Alright, cool. Up we go. Into a depot stop. Wait five seconds. Probably find that the scrap available again. And go pick it up. 
but typically it wouldn't go back to back like this. Beautiful. Oh wow, um, yeah, that, setting the front to 40, oh wait, it's, I forgot, we're still on 40 slots with the cargo wagons. Dup. Dup, and furthermore dup. Alright, optimization tech cards looking good, all of these are looking good. This one should be saturated by now, it almost is. Uh, what should we do next? I want to keep pushing towards being able to do some research in the rail network. Um, so we've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, I think we have to start doing the actual exotic space sciences. Proper depot? I'm still procrastinating it. Because I need to switch over to the batteries, and that means I have to change all the trains. Uh, on the other hand, doing one of these is a big undertaking. And I do have in mind what I want the depot to look like. Alright, I think we'll have up to three vanilla depots in each direction, cardinal direction, from the space elevator. So over here we'll probably do our first LTN depot. What is proper? Proper. <laughs> it's proper. Pretty sure. Alternatively, I could do my first LTN depot here in the middle of our existing blocks, kind of. Have I actually designed it yet? I think I did, but... Asterisk. Where did I put... Here we go. The V2 depot. Which apparently I haven't done a space version of. Yes, I have. Or have I? Space Rail Depot Short... no, that's not it. I think I need to run this through... Oh yeah, I haven't done the Space Belt version. Alright, let's just take this, put it in... I'm gonna jump down the Space Elevator so I'm not burning my uh, lazily thrown together life support. And we'll go to the editor, delete all of this again. That's taking a little longer than expected, there we go. And put in some scaffolding until we're ready to remove the excess. Grab our blueprint. Um, is this the one with the sushi? It is. I need to run it through that filter. Let's see if I can find it again. As space rail. There we go. I think that's it. Perfect. Alright, where is depot? Here is depot. Export string. Copy this here. And copy paste this. Import string. And that's it. 
except I don't need old power poles. Um, I also don't need scaffolding under the pylons. It's going to be harder to remove. And apparently... Oh yeah, we swapped belt for space belt, but it doesn't reach. We have a website that converts the rails to space ones. We do indeed. Uh, you can find links to that on the Discord. I'll just grab this link right now and repaste it in general. Um... Blueprint item replacer, e.g. space belt rail, that'll do. Fantastic. And welcome, Lord Sanguinous. Before I forget. Perfect. Alright, so we have some... Sushi, I might want to add in, well first first of all let me trace this around and make sure the space rail, the underground belts reach everywhere, may as well get rid of those undergrounds, they're so short, I kind of want to be able to just see it all, like I don't use undergrounds as much with space belt because the undergrounds are so short that it doesn't look much better. But also, with this build, I want to add some stuff soon. Let's keep following the belt. Oh. So instead of power pack discharged going somewhere else, processing, uh, it's going to be power pack destroyed and apparently it didn't include the loaders there we go it is. um basically we're gonna recharge these things on the spot and it'll only be the destroyed packs that we take somewhere else for processing Glorious spaghetti. Or sushi, I guess. Makes it a bit easier to see what we've got. And then we need a charger. And I don't really know how many of these we're going to need. So I'm going to put as many as I can elegantly fit. And... What we're going to drop off here is charged batteries. Well, I could even just drop off the regular batteries, but I think they have the same stack size regardless. It's probably easier if we drop off the regular batteries. Stack size 20, stack size 60, that's destroyed. And discharged is 60. Okay then. Yeah, it's definitely better to deliver them as discharged. Banky 1k, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Discharged, stack size 60. Um, if we are looking for, let's say, 100 stacks. Well, that's easy math. 60, 100. And we'll do a little test input here. Discharged. Alright. So 
So we delivered discharged belt uh, packs because they have a... Well, two reasons. It's easier anyway, and also they have a higher stack size. They'll be on this side of the belt, which means we're going to want to output to the near side. And we'll copy paste that four times, just so it doesn't collide with this. And yeah, that's pretty neat, I think. We could squeeze some in in some other places, but I hope. Uh, I really do hope 36 of these is enough to keep, uh, what is it, 18 trains running. Try running this train over bulk unloaders with at least one used battery. What? Oh, right. I think I understand what you mean, Jack Bez. And Mazzle Fazzle, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, both of you, that is. That is more than enough. I should hope so. They do have a minimum consumption of 500 watts, so I'll, I'll probably trim it down a bit um, after seeing how effective it is. But suffice to say, we are putting charged stuff... Well, charged and destroyed... Um, battery packs on the right side of the belt. And destroyed packs, which apparently we don't have any of yet, um, should find their way in here. Whoops. I think I failed. There we go. Uh, provide step threshold 50, high priority, that's fine. So once we actually have lots of busted ones, um, we'll take them somewhere to be fixed. That should be pretty good, I hope. So try running train over bulk rail unloader with one used battery. Uh, let's see. Bulk rail unloader. Give it some power. Get a train. Give it some batteries. Uh, battery. Oops. Pack. So give us some regular power packs and uh, discharged and or destroyed. How about all three? I can't put destroyed in there. And discharged, I guess, comes over here as well. I don't think they get destroyed while they're in the train, do they? Right? So these are just going to be discharged. And we can have 20, 40, 60 here, and eventually 60 here. Alright, and then if our train just drives past it, nothing happens. If our train drives to the point where the front is sitting over, it does unload the discharged. 
All right, so we have to avoid, um, we have to avoid the locomotives parking in front of bulk rail unloaders. But other than that, it should be fine. Let's double check. Please go to this station. Uh, I should have put this back here, actually. Discharged. All right. Please go here and then here. Okay. I guess nuclear trains would probably have the same issue. I like how it put regular rail behind this thing. Uh, let's try the nuclear train. With a... well, it doesn't matter which cargo wagon. Uh, give us some uranium fuel cells. And give us some used up fuel cells. I'm thinking this slot right here, the unloaders are able to take from. So if we move... like so. It shouldn't take the used up fuel cells out. I like how it's green on the map, that's kind of... Yes. Yes, it does. Cool. You'll have to avoid using LCL trains in normal slots. Yeah, you might be right. Hmm. Hmm. I haven't been using it that much. Having short trains pick up from where the long trains are. Wait, no. Okay, short trains can pick up at the bulk rail loaders. That won't be a problem. It's just short trains dropping off at double bulk rail unloaders, and I never allow that. I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we just happen... I think it just happens to line up so we're okay. Short trains can take from here. Um, a bulk rail loader is not going to be able to put electronic circuits into a locomotive. It's not going to try to take... And whenever I've got double unloader, uh, I never do minimum train length three. It's always four. Because I don't want it to, like, get imbalanced or to have more train deliveries than necessary. Uh, it's that if, if I want to have short trains drop off somewhere, I just have the one unloader. So we should be okay. Olbusk, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That green circuit build you were... where you were just looking at still has prod ones. It probably does, yes. Iron and copper hasn't been the slightest issue. Well, it does use stone though, this one. I forgot. Um, should maybe go and fix that. But yeah, uh, let me do one more experiment before we go in on this. Um, I want to check if... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just confirm what I was saying. About double bulk rail loaders. Alright, so that looks good. If we have an arbitrary bunch of stuff in here... And our 
train stops here. It's not like we're going to have trouble with this locomotive at the back. It's only if it's an unloader and only if it stops in front of it. So yeah, we should be fine. Don't even have to make any changes to make it work. Alright then. All this time we've made four destroyed space train power packs. They stack to 60. Uh, so it would take 750 times this thing, all of this running, um, to fill one short train with the space wagons. To have to go refurbish these. Um, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with... Well, no, it should be fine. If I just request, uh, like, up to two train loads, let's call it, like, a little bit more than one train load. Uh, let's just double check. 60 times 50 is 300. 3,000, rather. Um, let's set it to 4,000. So, we can do 320 times 60. We can fit 19,200 batteries in here. Uh, uh, discharged power packs, that is. Um, how qu The thing is... What I'd really like to be able to do... If... I don't think we could do it with LTN. If we could set it so that the primary producer of discharged power packs will only deliver to here if it's empty or almost empty. But the place where we refurbish the power packs, um, it'll take from all the time. That would probably be pretty epic. Or alternatively, I could do a block that both produces and refurbishes the space train power packs in one go, and we'll prioritize refurbishing. That sounds like a good idea, actually. And I wonder how much space we need for that. Because power pack is just one recipe. I don't think we're going to need a high throughput of it. Um, can we do it here? We can. Three, so uh, three solids in, one solid out. And the refurbishment is going to be a lot harder. Power pack. I think we need a chemical plant or biochemical facility. No, we need a recycling plant. Okay. So it would be the same size on the ground or in space. And apparently we don't have it researched yet? No, surely we've got it researched. Manufacturing refurbish. Okay, cool. So recycling facility. By the way, will the disc batteries uh, destroyed? Or, oh, discharged. Uh, batteries come out of the train. If you always have the one side of the belt full, are you going to do a different block for emptying? Oh, um, so... Basically... That's not a bad point. We should probably, uh, we should probably limit just how full we make the one side of the belt here. And I could either do it by, like, detecting part of the belt and connecting to all of these inserters, 
Or maybe I sh could do some sushi magic and keep it so that the belt is always only half. Like if if I bot if I can bottleneck half of the belt at one point. Do I want to do that though? Is there going to be a good place to fit it? So basically... Normally it would look like this, right? And input priority. And and we get 50-50 output, which is hard to see here. Let me do something a bit clearer, perhaps. That's not so good. How about red cables? Yeah, you can see the gaps that come after this. Is there a way I could... filter it for... discharged power packs? And on the right side we have... It is the right side, right? It's right, right? Yes. Right side is charged. Right side is charged power packs. That's just going to give us 50-50, weirdly enough. Hmm. Huh, that is... that is interesting. Why don't use a yellow inserter from Unloader? Yellow inserter from Unloader. Oh, you mean like from the station? No? No, it's the right side that we have to leave room for unloading these. But we're just trying to find the fancy solution right now. This is the easy solution. We can just say charged power pack equals zero. Wait, that's not right. Uh, these ones are going to be read belt contents hold and nothing else. These ones are going to be charged power pack not detected. So it'll wait till there's a gap before they output anymore. Um, and we could vary the length of that gap. Just to make sure there's always a bit of room. But I'd much rather have something more consistent. Oops. And a bit smarter. And I'm thinking there's probably a way to do it with some sushi belt tricks. What if you condition the SEC splitter to have charged to the left? Charged to the left. Hold on, let me do it instantly. Power pack on the left, input priority is still right. And it's doing the same thing. Weirdly enough. So the charge power pack is bottlenecking here with just the one belt. And the recycled charged power packs are being prioritized. Which means they slow this stuff down. Which means we get our 50-50 output up here. And the other power packs are not affected. Normally what we do here is just something unrelated, like Deconstruction Planner. 
the point is to bottleneck the output of the first splitter, so this is just like one bit of belt. Like that. But I'm hoping, or I was hoping, there's some clever way to use a filter here to get an out um, other than this, but I don't think so. The upper one, not the lower? You mean input priority? Input priority left sort of accomplishes nothing. Um, I can't put a filter on input priority. It might just take more splitters than I wish. Um, we can start with this. Split off charged power packs. And then do something like this, maybe? And then merge it back in. Oh, I think that works. Hey, it it it's a little it's a little more splitter than I hoped I would have to use, but that's what I actually thought of to start with. Um, very pleased to see that working right off the bat. Maybe it's a bit clearer if you look at it side on. The lower splitter, disconnect, uh, discharge left, the upper one charged right. Uh, I don't know. But this works. And it's actually, like, it's literally just eight tiles sticking out to the right. That's pretty good, actually. I'm, I was going to say I'm sure we can find somewhere to fit that. But uh, that's a lie. Um, we could maybe fit it in here, though. With a slight detour. Right splitter needs just one. Do you mean this lot? I don't think so. Hold up. You mean like this, maybe? Um, I don't think. That's interesting. We end up with some gaps. We end up with some gaps in the left side. We reduce our split account by one. And we do get the 50-50. Why do we get the gaps on the left? All of these go up here. 50-50 go here. And they all come back. It seems like once it saturates, we should get a consistent throughput on the left belt. Is that what we get? Yeah, I think the little gaps were like less and less frequent on the left side as it was saturating. That's cool. All right, uh, so we can make it slightly smaller. It's still like, is it even smaller though? It's kind of the same size. That's really unfortunate. I think I like this more because it doesn't have to saturate 
to do its job. It's it's just because we can't like output this down here. Now you slip changed and not disk. Uh, slip charged but not discharged. What? Uh, anyway, let me see if I can fit this somewhere elegantly. I definitely can. We'll just not do the underground here. Oh, that's a mess. Yeah, that's it. And that means it takes half as much uh, charged uh, power packs to saturate the whole belt as well. So that trains can pick them up whenever. SF Hobbit, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Factorio, fantastic. We just did a little sushi magic thing to deal with these recharged and recycled and sometimes broken batteries. Um, so basically, discharged batteries is our main input. Uh, then we run them through these things. Uh, space train battery pack charging station. 99% of the time they come out as charged. The other 1% they are destroyed. Well, that they don't disappear. They come out as an item called destroyed power pack. Um, and then we go over here. We split all of the discharged ones up this way, and then with the charged ones we do a basically a machine that outputs them at 50%. So we bottleneck, uh, we, we run them through a splitter that only outputs on one side, we bottleneck through one belt, then we output 50-50. 50-50 goes this way, 50-50 gets recycled, uh, and we have input priority on the recycled 50%. So the original input, um, if this is saturated, if it's a full half belt or a full belt, uh, and we've got the recycled stuff coming in, the recycled stuff will be prioritized, so this will slow down, and ultimately... Ultimately, we've got one belt or half belt going in, and we get 50% of it going out. And the reason we're doing that is when our trains come back and want to unload uh, discharged power packs, we need them to always be able to unload on this side. Uh, and I just realized we're going to end up with discharged packs on the wrong side of the belt. I could fix that right here. Conveniently enough. Power pack. Charged. We can just do this. Which kind of makes me want to move all of this up a tile. And that's it. Maybe that belt would look a little better up here. Cool. So we can keep the... Uh... Hmm... So if the discharged side of the belt is fully saturated, oh no, weird Discord things. It's fine. Pretend you didn't hear that. Anyway, 
suppose we have a train come back and it's unloading discharged onto this saturated belt. Actually, let me put it closer to where we're trying to test it. If this inserter will stop interrupting. Wait, I can't pick this up? Oh, my inventory is full. Okay. Um, get out of my inventory, please. Fantastic. Get that inserter back there. Is it possible to combine Crestorio 2 and Space Exploration? Uh, that is what we're doing. Don't they change recipes used in the beginning? Yeah, it makes it a bit harder. Or more annoying, depending on how you look at it. Won't charge start backing up and fill the belt eventually? Uh, no. We are... Wait, yes. Yes, they will. I still need to... I still need to limit the output based on how many charged there are. Which I was going to do in the first place, but I wanted this consistent um, set of gaps. Also, I'm not that good in Factorio help. Just learn it one little bit at a time. A uh, bit at a time. Gamer Willem, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One online, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Also, did I miss anyone? Seems good. All right, so I guess we're going to detect this bit of belt here. Or it doesn't really matter where. Make it neat as we can. Um, if we're just going to read contents hold. If charged, power pack is less than two. Because if it's a half belt, uh, I think this will be detecting two charged at all times, minimum. It looks like it's constantly detecting two. I could step through with a combinator just to make sure. Uh, let's freeze time, and then... I wonder how many ticks it takes. I don't have a... I don't have a bind for it because it was overriding one of my other binds. Yeah, it looks like every single tick, uh, it's gonna say two. Which is good, I was afraid there'd be little gaps. Okay, um, we're going to read contents hold and space train power pack is to be less than two for us to do our output. And then we'll just copy paste this to the other four corners. What just happened? There's a splitter in the way, that's fine. Okay. And then... Alright, so that should stop it from outputting power packs that are charged when the half belt is saturated. Which means we should always have room to output uh, from our trains. Let me just empty this for a bit. For testing. Is this in creative mode? Yes and no. Uh, we've got our main game running, wherein we have, oops, wherein we have our main base on Hagen and our space elevator and our growing space elevator rail block base. Here's our old spaghetti science orbital base that we're slowly moving away from. A uh, bit of a mole to get things going. We've also got a few outposts 
on various planets. Um, but basically we've got a mod called Editor Extensions. And you can have a separate save with a whole other scenario, but if you go into Mod Settings, Per Player tab, and Editor Extensions, down the bottom you'll find Testing Lab. Just switch that to something other than Off, and uh, it'll have this other this other surface that you can go to to mess around with. Why Hagen? A few reasons. So first of all, Hagen has Cryonite. Um, Hagen has an exotic resource that Alvis doesn't. That's nice to get started with. Um, but for the long term, for the oh, it's also smaller than Hagen. I mean Nalvis, sorry. Uh, which means it's cheaper to get off planet. Um, when we tested the space elevator in a different save, it was like. 1100 parts to get started and I think it cost over four parts per minute to maintain minimum. Uh, this one's obviously a little bit cheaper and it takes less liquid rocket fuel for cargo rockets to take off, less energy if you're using delivery cannons and so on. Um, but also long term, late game, there's actually a very very big reason. Time to leave my name, fair enough. Mazzle, Fazzle. There we go. And let me just mark it off the list before I forget. Mark it off the list. Whoop. Create a dashboard. Should have opened this before. Uh, but the other reason that we go to Hagen, which is relevant super into the late game, like for the entire game, is there's an anomaly that we were going to be able to exploit called Foenestra. And the gimmick of Foenestra, that I did not see coming. Give me this stone before you get confused. Uh, the gimmick of Foenestra, or one of them, is that it is equal distance to all locations in interstellar space. So once you leave the interstellar map, go to Foenestra, it's 10,000 distance, 10,000 delta V, and then to go from Foenestra to anywhere else, no matter where it is, no matter how far away, uh, it's also 10,000 distance to get here. Uh, add to that the fact that in space exploration, the distance that spaceships travel in the solar system compared to the interstellar distance, is actually far more than you would think. Normally you would expect, like, the interstellar travel to be 99% more than that. Basically all of the journey, uh, even between stars that are relatively close. Uh, but in this mod pack, um, the distance traveled from Nalvis to Hagen, or to the interstellar map, is... I think we compared it like, we looked at the Delta V to go to, let's say, let's let's pick one of these, preferably one of these nearby stars that has, where we've discovered a planet that's very close to the interstellar map. Uh, I guess we don't have one. Alright, let's look at the nearest star, Almea. We've got a planet called Stormhurst, and from Nalvis Orbit... Now this orbit, we're going to look up Stormhurst. Oops. And its distance, its delta V from now this orbit is... This says from Hagen. How dare you. Uh, 20,276 from Hagen. Do I need to, like, click into here? Here we go. Uh, Stormhurst. Delta V from Nalvis Orbit, 26,173. So, the distance from here down to here is actually a significant chunk of the journey if we're flying to this planet. Um, 
So when we have late game an anomaly that reduces our travel time from here to ultimately here, or it could be also here, it doesn't matter, uh, that distance is going to be 20,000. Um, the difference in travel time for our spaceships, if they only have to go from the interstellar map to Hagen, compared to if they have to go all the way back down here to get to Nalvis, it's actually a really, really big fraction of the journey. And even if we aren't, even if we weren't going to exploit the, uh, ooh, wow, follow a robot count is almost done. Uh, even if we weren't going to exploit, uh, going to exploit the anomaly, uh, the travel distance added by going all the way into the almost the center of the solar system is still a significant extra bit of distance. Really need to learn how to use trains and circuits. Indeed, you'll get there. I believe. Um, so where's our thing we were working on? It's in the editor. I need to go back to myself and then control E. Try not to do this with construction bots flying around. They will get teleported into uh, the editor extension space. You can set it in the Universe Explorer. Uh, oh, the default distance from thing. I think t -Hacks has made or was supposed to make some YouTube tutorials. I did do that a while ago, yeah. Um, I mean, I just sort of did it live and uh, cut it out for a video. But I, I did my best to explain. LTN. Banished to the Shadow Realm, indeed. Um, okay, so... Oh, right, I wanted to... Why can't I edit this? There we go. Um, I wanted to get rid of most of what's on the belt and let it saturate again and see how it looks. Okay, so we should end up with a saturated left side of the belt, 50-50 on the right side of the belt. Um, I kind of want to speed that second part up a bit for testing, so let's go charged power pack just for a little while. Oh, actually it'll slow that down. So yeah, we can just wait until that gets all the way around the belt. I don't know how, but once I manage to remove my character from the normal game with editor extensions, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if you were here, Mazel, but um, uh, we were actually riding our our spaceship. Doop a doop, fantastic. We were actually riding our spaceship back from, I think it was Nalvis orbit, back to here, and playing around in editor extensions. Uh, the spaceship had clamps set automatically to land here, and then the surface that is the spaceship in flight no longer existed when I went from editor extensions back to the main game. Or rather, it didn't send me back to the main game. I just found my body in the editor extension surface. And the only way out was to try the old respawn button. Uh, but that didn't actually help. What happened instead was we found ourselves on... We found ourselves at the default spawn point on Nalvis. Surrounded by our gun turrets, which were no longer on our side. Um, and it does not take very long for your gun turrets to kill you. It really doesn't, especially when you're not wearing armor and the gun turrets have upgrades. 
Uh, so yeah, we, we kind of had to load a save for that one. So public service announcement. If you are going to mess around in the editor extension space while you are flying a spaceship, please turn off the auto clamp. Or be absolutely sure that you're not going to reach your destination before you... Um, before you get out of the editor. This has been a public service announcement. Uh, let's have a look at our build. I left this running too long, but it seems to be fine. Except there's a few more charged ones than I had in mind in this bit of the belt, but that's okay. Uh, what I wanted to test was, let's suppose... Our train comes back with discharged power packs when the belt is totally saturated. So that's going to go there. Insert is going to put these discharged power packs on the right side of the belt. And then I think we're going to end up with, yeah with a few extra discharge power packs accumulating up here. So actually, I think what I might want to do is have both sides of the belt 50-50. Um, There's actually no reason to only make it 50-50 on one side, although it was fun figuring out how to do it. Just leave in space. Yeah, exactly. So... Is it like this? We just don't do those extra splitters? Yeah, that's it. That is how she goes. Alright. Which means this gets a bit simpler. Doesn't take up as much space. We could probably fit it somewhere a little bit neater and not mess with this layout as much. Probably right here, actually. Right before the... No, it should definitely be after the input from the rail system. Um, so I think I should do it here, actually. Can I... I don't suppose I can squeeze it in. No, yeah, that's not bad. Just like this, or like this. I think that looks the most tidy. Cool. Let's empty this a little bit again for testing. Okay, so if a train comes back with 60 discharge packs, which that would be alarming because it has no more power left. Let's wait till this empties first. It's going to take a little while. No, we're almost there. If a, if a train comes back... I think I need to swap the output side for all of the inserters taking from the uh, locomotives. Yep. Alright. So how many are there going to be? 1, 2, 3... There's going to be 18. 1, 2... Well, 18 times 2, 36. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six. I wonder what the easiest, the fastest way to do this is. 7, 8... Uh, nine, great, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think we already did that one, didn't we? Right? 20? Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, eight, twenty nine, thirty one, two, three. Four, five, six. I thought that would be 36. How did I miscount that? 37, 38. Oh, I know. 39. 40. Is that all of them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 4. 20 times 2, 40, yes. See now, uh, see why now? Don't need a filter to have them go on the right side. Yeah, I, I wanted to just avoid having to have that filter. So all of the inserters that take out the discharged power packs from the trains, uh, deliberately put them on the left side of the belt. Um, so we don't have to reorganize that at any point or anything like that. And we keep both uh, discharged and charge packs at 50% um, until the trains add stuff. But like at this point we bottleneck it at 50% so there's always room on the belt. Fantastic. Are the inserters, are the yellow inserters going to be able to pick up? I think they are. Because they'll miss one and find another. Yeah, that should be okay. On the other hand, I don't really see why we should have to wait for yellow insoders at this stage. Cool. Um, so I think that's basically it. And as for the... Uh, building and refurbishing of the space train power packs. We need... We already bring lithium sulfur batteries here. It's just the sulfuric acid. That's the only extra thing if we're going to put these together after building the space train power packs in the first place. I'm wondering why not just use blue inserters. <laughs> Because we are using blue inserters, so there. And also, how dare you. Yellow is more cute? I mean, yellow is... Well, it would be fine for the output, but like... With how quickly we go through the batteries, we're actually going to have to output multiple each time. Um, but yeah, considering just how slow it is... Um, charging these things. I'm not convinced that this is overkill with the number of space train battery packs uh, charging stations that we've got. Alright. I'm pretty sure that's our blueprint. Uh, before we go and build the next thing, I'd like to trim our scaffolding here. Um, you know what? I think in this case, it's almost perfect already. But this looks a little tacky. Depots? These are the depots. Oh, wait. This is... This doesn't have a wire connection anymore. Uh, we're going to have to fix that. 
Unless I want to put a constant combinator next to all of these, which I don't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Does this reach? Nah, no way. That would be too easy. That might look good, though. Maybe we should find an excuse for something to connect over here. I don't think we can. Where is the constant combinator? Here it is. Next to the loader. The initial loader. Um, so I just need to connect this slot and these outside ones. Oh, not that outside one. Just this one and this one. Um, I might just piggyback across the belts, honestly. How bad is that going to look? The answer is yes. One, two, one, two, like this perhaps? I don't know, it's maybe not that bad. Got the paste over here. And then we need to connect all of these somehow. How far does it reach? Not quite far enough. Almost. Could I have it reach about the same number of tiles? That's kind of hard to quantify. I don't love that. Can we move, move it over to the left a bit? Like this, maybe? That's less bad. That is less bad. Alright, so now all of these are connected. I can live with that. And we've got our is depot train link 3 stuff over here. Although apparently it's actually a depot for train link 4, so we should probably fix that. Glad I double checked it, or really I was just doing narration. Yeah, I think that'll do, to be honest. Train length don't work for depot? Uh, yes it does. Don't know what else to say to that. If we had long trains and short trains going to the wrong depots, that would be a problem. Uh, a very bad problem that might make me stop using LTN, actually. Alright, let's blueprint this thing. And I need to make the equivalent on the ground as well. We'll have to deliver... Well, no, never mind. We can do this on the ground also. I was going to say we'd have to deliver power packs all over the place. But we can just do a build on surface as well. Alright. Um, space, train, depot. What might be better if I typed it here. And I want the icons to be something like uh, depot, length 2, and space locomotive. As per LTN manual, depot ignores requester and provider signals. Okay, but the length isn't that. It's just length. It's not a requester or a provider. 
Snapgrid 86251. Uh, if it didn't allow us to pick the train lengths for the depot stops, uh, it would have been a big problem last playthrough and this playthrough. Don't need the trains and train fuel. Train stop names, yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure the train stop names are all correct. I'll have to check now and hope I don't have to redo. Oh, actually, this only has vertical. Um, it, it only has vertical bulk rail loaders and unloaders, so I think using select new contents would actually work in this case. Uh, but let's put it down here. Wait, why is this still called LCCL Depot V2? Uh-oh, where did I put my new blueprint? Um... That was really weird. That was just like muscle memory. I put it in totally the wrong place. Alright. Oh, and this should say space rail. We'll call this V3. Lengthy signal for requester and provider as per manual. Maybe they just missed a spot in the manual. Because we don't have, uh, we don't have short trains going to the long train depot, and we don't have long trains going to the short train depot, as you can see here. It would be a problem, because then we would have to, then our depots would have to, like, decode the binary signals of where the locomotives and cargo wagons are and tell the inserters to only put fuel in if a locomotive is detected and we might still have use cases where the inserters would stick out trying to put rocket fuel in like this so then you'd get random cargo wagons picking up rocket fuel or whatever fuel you're using um, when your train goes back to the demo, uh, depot it would be an absolute disaster name is matter oh yeah we do have um okay yeah i totally forgot we do we do give them different uh depot names to go to oh maybe you're right well it's at least a note for myself when i look at this That's the only time that the station name matters in LTN, actually. Literally the only time. Right then. Where are we going to build this thing? We may as well get it in motion while we're solving our next problem. It was over here, I believe. Where am I going? Here we go. One, two, three, that's for vanilla. This will be our LTN depot. And let's get our construction train to pay it a visit. Wait for inactivity. 15 seconds, should be fine. His name is other tire of logic other tire looks great though thank you we don't understand how to do automatic train networks uh one piece at a time i just use the blueprint from the web that automatically detects which wagons need fuel yeah we could do that but i don't like how many combinators and stuff would be needed uh, it would be a fun project, though. 
I need to redesign this also. I'm not looking forward to replacing all of our trains. I think we have about a hundred. Um, let's see. Trains. We have 77 trains. Some of them are on other planets, and we're just going to ignore those. But I want to swap all of the LTN trains. Um, not to mention the vanilla trains. Well, almost all of them. Uh, for some reason, the uh, vehicle roboports and stuff don't work with the space cargo wagons. Um, it's also just kind of easier to refuel some of these trains with the solid rocket fuel, for example. Um, but that said, uh, for the most part, for our regular trains that are everywhere, um, I want to replace all of them. That is going to be a whole process, but we can at least get started. Um, and I wanted to put... probably... I could probably use, like, this space right here to deal with the battery packs. Because it's really not going to take much space um, to pull that off. I doubt we're going to need that much throughput overall. I guess I could be wrong. Maybe I should make sure our train battery pack thing is close to all of our depots. Wait, what if I could do it right here with some spaghetti? No. I mean, maybe, but no. Like, if we have one recycler and one machine for making the discharged uh, battery packs in the first place, then we'd need three solids and one fluid delivered, and I don't know where I'm going to fit that. I guess I could do it here, but no, I, it's going to look tacky as hell. Assign station, give its simple command like wait until empty. Indeed. And go back to resource location, get stuff till full. Yep, that's vanilla trains for you. Um, right, are we almost done placing this stuff? Actually, kind of, yes. Is the scaffolding done? I think it might be. Oh, it is. That was a left click, no shift. We're going to need to come back for more belt, most likely. I also don't have battery pack charging stations automated. Uh, let's go do that here. What goes into it? Nothing we don't already have in place. Charging station. And... I don't know. A couple of stacks. How many do we need? Like 40? We require 36. Very close. I'll just make it a couple of trips. I think there's room in this... Uh, in this wagon over here. Alright, let's figure out exactly what this needs. I think it's really going to be as simple as this. And sulfuric acid. Alright. 
So this 100% outputs a power pack, right? Yes. Now, how fast are we looking at here? Point one two space train power packs per second. I don't think that's going to be enough, um, considering how quickly we saw the trains emptying these things. I think we actually do need a block or a half block uh, to build these, which is kind of going to make it easier in a way. Last Wagon has so many redundant stuff in it, like signal receivers and yellow inserters. Who says yellow inserters are redundant? I mean, they probably are. Signal receivers... Yeah, we're not usually... Not usually placing those. Um, also, I should check that we actually have room... in the wagon right now, which we do. It's fine. Let's go place our train here for the moment. And then after it does one lap, do it again. And that should get everything built. Also, I'm not convinced we need the substation in the middle for this build, but I want to be consistent. Alright, so back to the drawing board. Let's do a half block. Grab ourselves a space rail, I mean a straight rail remover. Fantastic. Oops. And over we go. Uh, let's get some scaffolding in here until we're ready to trim it. Seems good. Alright, so we need three solid items dropped off and one uh, sulfuric acid. Let me check what... well, let's build a little bit first and then we'll see. See what kind of rate we get. Also, can we use base manufactories? That'll drastically cut down on the number of machines. Be better for UPS. Power pack. Yes, we can. Fantastic. Um, and just how fast would that be if we were to go full speed? I think we need more efficiencies. For this one. That would be 12 per second only. 240 batteries? 360 batteries per second um, with the two different types of batteries for one machine. That's crazy. Do prods work on them? No. Nothing in space except for labs um, will allow you to put in productivity modules. Where is lab? Here we go. Science lab. That will allow you to put in prods and I presume a singularity lab, which is actually almost the exact same size. I thought it would be bigger. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, everything else in space, no productivity bonuses. Uh, but I think I checked as well. Um, we can't actually... We can't actually prod bonus the power packs. Nope. Unless you count super productivity modules. Alright, but... Um, yeah, if we can use a space manufactory, then I really could probably do it with a couple of machines. So maybe in space I'll just do it in that one corner that we haven't used up yet. We'll see what kind of throughput is needed. In space no one can hear you being productive. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's clean up some of this other mess. And we'll look at what we're going to do on the ground where we can't have a giant machine. But yeah, I... I don't know. I, I want to say we don't need more than a half block, but I also wonder how much, how many of these we're going to go through once the entire rail system is running on them, and as we get further and further into the game. But uh, we did a little experiment with the power packs yesterday. It's actually insane how quickly they discharge. Um, I'll, I'll do a little demo right now. So we'll do some rail. Um, just bring it around in a circle. That should be fine. And locomotive. Let's put in a train stop. I guess there's only one place, really. Give it some charged power packs. It's as full as it can get, and we're just gonna get it to go round in circles. Uh, I guess we need two stops. How about this? That's not gonna work. Yes it is. Alright, so we're gonna leave it going in circles for a little while. How far into one power pack do you think it's gone so far? Place your bets. It's used up two power packs? Okay, I'm gonna stop it in like 10 seconds. All right. Bog champ, bog champ, bog champ. Cyclomatic, thank you very much for the four months. Much appreciated. Thank you. How you doing? Good to see you again. All right. It has gone through 1.6 power packs. That's less than I expected. We did double it with the mod settings yesterday after seeing, like... I guess it didn't have to accelerate that much going around in circles, but like, uh, we had a train, it was actually the construction train, I put the, I, I put those uh, space locomotives on it, it drove from here, down here, parked here-ish, and then couldn't get back home because it had already gone through its first power pack. Um, that's pretty atrocious, uh, if you ask me. There is a mod setting, you can have it go twice as far as that on one uh, power pack. But suffice to say, I don't trust that, like, two per second or something is necessarily going to keep our entire factory running. How's the newest Pog partner? Not too bad, thank you. A little worn out today, but other than that, quite good. Boosters into the grid of the train so they go max speed in one to two seconds. That is just a video game thing, right? How would you do it? How would you actually make boosters on a rail track? Like, safely. 
to be clear. I'm, I'm sure you can technically do them. Alright, let's grab our regular old rail block. Except without the old power poles. Have you ever watched the last Indiana Jones? <laughs> uh, actually, no, I don't think I have. Um, what am I looking for? Island substations. There we go. So the best we can do on the ground is assembly machine 3. Um, we'll fit our beacon here. Ish. And we'll do the usual... Or something like that. And we can't prod load. We'll just do a pair of columns. How about train powered rocket? Um, I actually had an idea for that. So, step one build an orbital ring. Step two build an orbital ring on the moon. Step three, these are equatorial orbits. Oh, I guess that's part of step one and two. That's what I meant. Uh, that, that should have been implicit. Uh, step three, launch a train off of the orbital ring by just like decoupling from it at just the right speed at just the right time so that it's on a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a projectile... Uh, I'm, I'm blanking, I almost have the word. It means, you know, like you throw a rock and it's just going to go on that path. Ballistic trajectory? Uh, so you, you have a train just fly off the track at a ballistic trajectory, so it will end up at the moon, at the, the moon's orbital ring that also has a train track, and you put some RCS thrusters on it for adjustments. You're talking about a space tether? It's just a rail gun? Uh, I guess the space gun would do it that way, yeah. There's a lot of really cool ideas for getting into space cheaply. After an initial investment, of course. Um, but I think the orbital ring is by far the coolest and most effective, cost-effective that I've heard of. Alright, we've got three inputs here, 20, 10, and 2. What's our rate? Um, well, each each column is like... 3, 15, and 30 per second. Hmm. If I could get the 2 to 1 ratio, I could do one belt for the lithium sulfur batteries and the batteries. But I'd need to do a sushi belt for that, because the machines will always take arbitrarily, pseudo-randomly from the belt. Um, and you'll end up with a mess at the end of it, unless you cycle it back. Still doesn't solve the hardest thing that is getting to orbit, which requires the most energy. Uh, if you have the orbital ring, you literally just drive up into space. Um, like, maybe you have a train... It, like, imagine you have your space elevators, but instead of... Instead of it just being the elevator, and it requires some kind of unobtainium with the space elevator cable, um, because there's nothing so strong as it wouldn't collapse, uh, instead you've got a ring that's all the way around uh, the planet, which is held up... Partly by the shape of it, I guess, but mostly by... It is actually in orbit, um, with parts of it that are not directly physically connected. They're, like, magnetically connected. So part of it is going around the planet rather quickly. Earth is too heavy, we need to die. <laughs> okay. 
Um, yeah, it's pretty wild to me that that would actually work. Uh, like, if you, if you have two objects in space that are magnetically connected, you've basically kind of net got one object in space. And if if one of those objects is... If both of those go all the way around a planet and one of them's going fast, like an orbit, or double orbital speed, it actually, like, balances out. What am I doing here? So how... This is without even adding speed modules. I mean, I would just do fewer machines if I have to, but... 30 batteries and 15 lithium sulfur batteries per second. If I do a full belt batteries, half a belt of lithium and half a belt of steel, that's actually fine. Since we can do 45, 22.5 and 22.5. I guess I was overthinking it. Battery. Battery. And lithium sulfur. And then steel plate. Kind of want those swapped around just for the look of it. Where is lithium sulfur? And if I swap it around, it doesn't swap that back, does it? More grumble. Lithium sulfur, steel plate. And I don't think I can get away with it in the middle. No, I'd have to have, like... Except for the steel plate... I would need double the belts. Okay. Uh, how many would I need? Oh, can the inserters keep up? 2.5, 1.25, probably. And then... Over here. So the outsides are easy. And we've got extra space, so I think we'll just make it wider. Basically do the same thing on this side, except I would have to get more vertical space because I can't do the long arm inserter input for the middle two, which means we'd have to cut off four machines in each direction. But I'm not too fussed about it. I think it'll be fine. And then copy paste flip. Can we fit? Yes, we can. Very easily, actually. That should be fine, right? What if we go fast? I don't think the inserters and belts are going to ever keep up if we go fast. Uh, we'll just trim down the number of machines. We can end up with double speed belts. And I think it's this many efficiencies to get minimum power consumption. Yes, it is. So we have 40 machines. That would be... That would be over a thousand batteries per second. 525 lithium sulfur batteries. We're not doing that in one rail block. 
It will just trim down the number of machines when we upgrade it more. Um, I could probably go for some, like... I don't think I want to bother with a wide area beacon showing up 10 megawatt all the time. We, sh we could just go with some speed and efficiency in each machine. That's negative 40% power consumption. To get those parts into orbit would be a massive task in the first place. Uh, that's what I thought. I don't remember the explanation, but apparently it's not as big of a deal to get started as you would think. Alright, is this going to be too fast for the belts that we've got? Wait, I think we already have the technology to go with faster belts. We should probably do that already. Nope, we don't. When can we unlock it? Logistics 4. We could already unlock it. Why have I not done this? Because I didn't notice it. I, I would have jumped on this if I'd noticed it sooner, when we just had Material Science 1. Um, it also opens up Tool Belt 5. I'm pretty sure Logistics 5 is going to be out of reach. It is not. We could already have Purple Belts. Why haven't I got purple belts yet? Probably because they need imasite, um, in high volumes. That's going to have to wait a bit. But still, I'm surprised I didn't at least unlock it yet. Um, let's get the tool belt and the... Worker Robot Cargo Size 3, that's as good as it gets, fantastic. Better Breaking Force, why not? And even better Breaking Force. What's the other prereq here? Logistic 5. Sure. Probably. And then we'll continue that research that I paused. If I can find it? Oh, here it is. Fantastic. RF Holloway, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. RF Holloway. Let me mark that off my list. There we go. Okay, so how fast is this? It is a whole belt of battery, exactly half a belt of lithium sulfur. That's beautiful. We're definitely going with that. Could not, literally could not have calculated that better. Each machine needs like almost seven items per second. Should be okay with um, some stack inserters. Probably. Oh, there's five on each side. Sure, let's go with this layout. Why not? Um, let me just kill that. And copy it to this. Copy it to this side. And uh, what? Copy it over here. Except I don't want the inserters crossing each other like that. I just don't like it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That won't be good enough. We can have the long arms. No, we need... I forgot. We need four belts here. We deleted a belt, indeed. Alright, so let's double check. 
one full belt batteries, so we'd need four belts to keep up with this at full speed. Um, lithium sulfur battery, half a belt, and steel plate. Actually, I don't think the long arm inserter is going to be able to keep up with 2.25 per second. Maybe it can. With, especially if we have the stack size of three, which I thought we had. We do. I need to synchronize the um, the tech level again. I don't remember how to do it. Settings. Um. There was something hidden in the settings or somewhere with the map editor that synchronized our research in this space with the main game. But I don't remember how to do it. It's in the game settings? Game settings. As in settings here? Is it mod settings? Editor extensions? Match research in testing lab? Yes, it is. Um, so do I just turn it off and on? Wait, didn't I just turn it off? I, what? No. How dare you. Alright, so what about now? There we go. Override stack size 3. Fantastic. We haven't, like, broken our research on this side, have we? No. Looks okay. I should really empty my inventory a bit, so I stop having to pick up that stuff when I switch back and forth. Let me drop off some things at the mall. That'll probably do it. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think our long-arm inserters are struggling here. It needs 10 to make a recipe. Keeps going over 22, or over 20. Is it going down? I think it's going down, but then the amount of steel plate it picks up is going to keep, is going to like fluctuate a bit. It doesn't seem, oh it stops at 20, okay it's not having trouble, cool. Um, I think in that case we're good then, probably. And then we just need one, two, three. Oh, we need the sulfuric acid. Um, I don't know how many refurbishments we're going to need to do. I did run it for quite a little while, that other block, before we had like four destroyed batteries. You can use the rate calculator to check if the inserters can keep up. In theory, yes, but often they have trouble picking up from the belt at the speed that they supposedly pick up. It, it, it checks, it calculates ba based on direct insertion, which is instant. Uh, and sometimes output can be a problem too, because while you theoretically will have exactly 45 items per second going onto one belt and the sides are equal, you'll end up with an inserter trying to put something onto the belt and it can't find room and it just won't be able to keep up and you won't actually get a saturated belt. Unless you like go out of your way to 
make some room where the inserter can always input. Um, where there's always space, for example. So yeah, there are things that Rate Calculator doesn't quite keep up with. And it wouldn't really be realistic or, or easy to say that it should. Right, let's go for double speed, double efficiency here again. And how fast is this? What's our input? Lithium sulfur battery and sulfur, basically. I think I'll just do it in the other half. And I really don't think we're going to need that many, but I will build it to be extensible. Maybe not that extensible. But we could if we really wanted to. Let's do some regular old belt. I mean pipe. Oh, I've actually gone late already. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising since I had to start late. And I think over here we'll do... A separate unloader. Or I could just steal the lithium sulfur batteries from over here. Jetro, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Noxyway Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. One week of no spaceship breakdown? Spaceship breakdown? Why would the spaceship break down? I, have, I haven't been driving it anywhere. Uh, it's two solids in, one solid out. Uh, rate should be pretty slow, I imagine. Wow, it's actually really slow. It It is so much slower. I mean, it's probably enough, but still. I actually don't think... I, I think I'll feel safer having all of this built. So we can do a whopping 2.16 refurbishes per second in this block. And we only need a handful of lithium sulfur batteries. Yeah, I might just borrow those from here. Which means on this side all we need is sulfuric acid. Is that actually in the middle? Yeah, it is. Where's our pump? Over here. I kind of want this to line up with that, kind of. Maybe turn it around. Oh, that's cozier than I thought it would be. And we could just do the output in the middle. Sorry to ask again, seems you missed my questions. Uh, sorry for that. How many coal miners is good per planet, or would you recommend? Um, that's an interesting question, because... Well, you have to pick what you value. So, there's a lot more coal mining uh, seams in the middle of the map, and the bigger... The more of the map that you leave exposed, the bigger your save file is, the longer it's going to take to save the game. Uh, I think it has an impact on UPS as well, but it's probably, in my experience, that particular thing is not as bad as you would think. Um, but what I want to end up with... This is actually like the opposite. I, I, I actually got every core mining drill possible on Grannis. We're only bottlenecked, we're, we're very definitely only bottlenecked by liquid rocket fuel. Uh, on Grannis we've got 
uh, core fragment entity. We've got 24, we've only got 24 coal mining seams on the entire planet. So we're not that deep into, uh, into the diminishing returns. And this is like all of the vulcanite that we can get in the solar system. And I kind of... It's not set in stone, but I kind of want to stay in the solar system until I've got spaceships if I can. Because you can just point cargo rockets at interstellar targets, but they crash way more often uh, the further they have to go. And they cost a lot of liquid rocket fuel and so on. And liquid rocket fuel in K2 is a much, 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 much bigger pain to produce. Especially on an outpost. So I'm kind of... In this case, I've actually gone for every coal mining drill I can. But later on in particular, um, especially... I, I think ideally I would like to go for the biggest planets... And with only up to, what, um, 16, maybe 25, it's uh, N squared. Like, compared to the first mining drill, if you want to get the same amount of ore mining on top of that, you have to add more and more drills. So 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared is the equivalent of 1 uh, of the first mining drill times 1, 2, or 3. You need 9 core mining drills to get the equivalent of the first one 3 times. Um, so the more drills you build, the more you're kind of wasting your time and it's getting less power efficient. And what I really want to do for the late game is have many outposts with a rather small, like the smallest footprint I can reasonably have with them. Uh, and they're just going to, they're basically just going to have space elevator, coal mining drills, a bit of rail to pick up the coal mining fragments. Um, and that's pretty much it, plus whatever is the absolute minimum to keep it all working. And we're going to have spaceships come and drop off supplies and take the stuff back. Um, so yeah, it's actually kind of a complicated, uh, answer. It depends, and those are the reasons it depends. How many spent batteries are there going to be as the rate of using them will be high? Will that be enough? Um, the spent batteries actually will get recycled. 99% of them, literally, precisely will get recycled by these uh, space train battery pack charging stations. And that'll just happen at the depot. The 1% that we have to deal with again at that block that we were just designing, uh, the destroyed ones. Um, and we just have to like put some more batteries in and give them some sulfuric acid and they'll come back. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it, it shouldn't be that much of a problem, but I do prefer to overbuild it than to underbuild it and find it bottlenecked later on. Let's get our construction train to visit this spot real quick. Maybe finish what we started. Um, but yeah, that is probably going to be it for today. And I suppose for Factorio this week, actually. Let's see who's streaming. Tomorrow we'll be continuing with Terraria uh, for the Worthy. And a couple of days after that we'll be doing XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Or Long War of the Chosen, to be precise. Thanks for streaming. Thanks for hanging out. Johan, El Pancho, everyone else. Kyung, no worries, you're welcome. Mazzle Fazzle. Uh, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. And I clicked on Terraria, not Factorio. Who is streaming Factorio? Let's see. 
not that many people watching today, relatively. Immo's doing SE.6. It's been at least five minutes since I rated Immo. Uh, all Highland? We might be due for that. SEK2 retake. Uh, sure. Let's go for this person. I haven't, uh... I don't think I've raided them before. Take care, Evil Plow. Thanks for hanging out. And you're welcome. Why is that train there? Which train? What's going on? The train that just... Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, well, that's a problem for next time. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just pretend you didn't see that. Look, I'll put the... I'll, I'll, I'll put the pause thing over it. See? Out of sight, out of mind. It's fine. LTN is already using the depot, indeed. Alright. Uh, let me just check that we can, like, raid this person and chat there without following and stuff. Looks okay. Alright, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means... And till next time, stay safe. Take care, guys. It will work. <laughs>